So very good afternoon, everybody. Today is the last day eh, of our uh, presentations. Semester uh, two students uh, are making their presentations on uh, the setting of the 20th century literature, the historical background of uh, the 20th century literature. Uh, today is the after. This is the after the last session of uh, our presentation season. Uh, the long day's journey coming to end today. The journey we started from first of April. <laughs> Today is the last day to end for for the semester four students, and now this day is for the semester two students. Uh, so uh, let us start with the first one, Divya. You can uh, come and start with your presentation. A very good afternoon to everyone. And uh, the last day of our presentation, and I'm going to deal with the uh, impact of modernism on literature and society. This is my personal information. These are the points which I discuss today. Introduction of modernism, uh, definition of modernism, principles of modernism, impact on literature and society, and uh, legacy of modernism, uh, introduction of modernism. Modernism uh, is the period of uh, exp experimentation in the art from the late 19th century, particularly in Europe of, of, of following the World War I. Marked as a radical departure from the traditional form and convention, it uh, reflects the uh, profound transformation in society of uh, society, technology, and uh, human consciousness uh, during the tumultuous period in history. The modernism movement uh, emerged as the response to the tumultuous social, cultural, and political changes that characterized in the 20th century and the aftermath of World War I, the rise of industrialization, urbanization, and technological advancements, the questioning of traditional values and norms all play a vital role to shaping the intellectual and artistic climate of the era. Modernism, modernist writer captured the essence of changing world and explored the complexity of human consciousness, identity, and society in, in the innovative ways. Now the definition of modernism. Uh, according to Maria Webster, uh, modernism means a tendency in theology to accommodate a traditional religious teaching to our contemporary thoughts and especially to devalue the spiritual elements. Second was also by uh, Maria Webster. Uh, Self-consciousness, break with the past and search for new forms. It's called uh, modernism. Here I put the another uh, definition from the uh, Philip uh, Philip E. Johnson. He was said that modernism is defined as the condition begin well. Uh, people realize that God is truly dead, and we are therefore our own. Now the principle of modernism. The, here I took the principle of modernism. The principle is to uh, play a vital role. If we study of the and if we uh, explore the idea of uh, impact of uh, art in the literature or uh, society. Now first one is empiricism, then uh, rationalism, humanism, uh, liberalism, welfare and urban life, urbanization and uh, democracy. Uh, technological advancement. It is a significant uh, principle of the modern modernism, individualism, and capitalism. Now, the important point of my presentation that uh, how the modernism impact on the literature. Uh, the origin of modernism in literature can be traced back to the late 19th, 19th to 20th century. Poets like William uh, W. Bates, uh, William Butler Bates, and the rise of magazines, the Yellow Book. Uh, the Yellow Book is a magazine which was published in 1890, and it referred to rise of the modern end of the modern modernism. In the second, 30 years earlier, the love song of J. Alfred Prokop, uh, published in 1950, and the Isra Pound, the Westland. Uh, consider as the work that marked the beginning of literary movement of modernism. 
Now the key figures of modernist literature, uh, uh, here I put that uh, imp impact of modernism on literature and uh, how there are various uh, uh, the uh, leading figures in modernism who uh, replace the idea, our idea in literature. Uh, first one is uh, D.S. Lawrence, uh, is a uh, uh, woman in law, it was published in 1920. It's a uh, book, The Great Gatsby novel, and the Samuel Buckets, uh, Waiting for Goddard. And Jane Paul Sartre's uh, Now See, P.S. Eliot, The Love Song of J. Alfred Pupok, uh, Isra Pounds, Make It New. Uh, Make It New is a phrase used by the Isra Pounds and this. <laughs> this art in a uh, uh, book or novelist uh, is uh, considered as the modernist, uh, which uh, reflects the idea of or uh, impact of uh, modernist uh, idea, literature. Uh, now the key characteristic of modern, modernist literature. Modernist literature is characterized by rejection of uh, traditional literary forms and break the form of uh, story uh, liner storytelling. Prominent themes in the um, 20th century modernism that uh, alienations, disillusionment, existentialism, and focus on the inner psyche. These are the significant themes which we find in the modernism or modern literature. Now the James Joyce wishes. Exemplify the stream of consciousness, the narrative techniques, uh, while uh, Virginia Woolf, uh, Mrs. Dolloway, Dolloway, is uh, explored the inner thoughts and emotion of its character, is to uh, reflect the uh, modernist uh, idea of uh, the inner psyche or the themes like uh, disillusionment or existentialism. Impact on society, how does modernism impact on society? Modernism, modernist themes and uh, social changes. Modernist literature uh, engaged with the uh, pressing with the social issue of, of the era, 19th century, and the aftermath of World War I, uh, the Roaring Twenties, and the Great Depression in the society, and the rise of totalitarian religion, all the found their way into modernist work and reflect into modernist work. George Orwell, as we know, the George Orwell in 1984, so as a totalitarianism regime and uh, modernist authors act as a witness to the social upheaval, upheaval of their era, using their work to comment and uh, critique the society, uh, societies in which uh, they live and reflect their, their value and uh, what, else, what is the um, surrounding of the, their uh, society. Now the modernism impact on visual art and culture. How the modernism impact on uh, visual art? In, uh, culture, as you know, that modernism was a limited, lim not only limited to literature, it was also impact on the architecture, art, music, and film. Also, uh, artists like Pablo Picasso who was a famous uh, painter, and uh, Vasily uh, Kaninsky. Vasily Kaninsky, he was a Russian famous painter, and uh, revolutionized, revolutionized the art world with the abstract and cubist styles. Reflecting the same speed of innovation found in the modernist literature, it was uh, took the um, innovation which we find in the uh, their painting. Architects such as Lee Kubo series, Liu Kubo series, embrace uh, funct functionalism and minimalism in their uh, architect, while composer like Igor Stravinsky experiment with the dissonance and rhythm. He was a music composer, Stravinsky. Now, the legacy and contemporary reflection of modernism. The legacy of modernism persists in contemporary literature and culture discourse. Authors such as Salman Rushdie, Ronnie Morrison, and Jim Palahiri uh, continue to draw on a more modernist theme in their identity, displacement, and cultural identity in their works and deflect the mod modernist uh, idea in their work. Moreover, modernist literature remains of the uh, for uh, his or uh, her subject of a scholarly inquiry with the ongoing debates about uh, relevance and impact on uh, subsequent literary movements. Now, the conclusion. In summary, uh, modernism impact on literature and society. It uh, shattered the traditional boundaries, inviting to exploration of human condition, amidst rapid technology and advancement in uh, and cultural shift. Modernist literature not only challenged the conventional narratives, but also mirrored the complexity and the contradiction of challenging worlds and fostering a deeper understanding of individual and society. Its legacy, its legacy, legacy endures and inspiring 
continue innovation, critical inquiry, and uh, to reach our operation for the dynamic interplay between the art and society. These are my references. Thank you. Now, anyone have a question regarding my presentation? Uh, Divya, my question is, in what ways did modernist literature challenge traditional notion, notions of identity, gender, and class in society? Okay. Uh, traditional notions of identity. In the identity, we uh, find that uh, in the traditional era, there were no writer who were, uh, they were write about the subjectivity or personal idea about any character. But in the modern society, we find that how the uh, author or uh, anyone who reflect the idea idea of uh, characters uh, psychological condition condition their subjectivity and if we reflect the idea of genders uh, here we took the um, uh, one best example of virginia Woolf, uh, female writer and uh, his a uh, writing about the female agency or uh, anatomy about the female uh, desire or how it, in the nowadays it uh, reflect the targets of patriarchal society and uh, in the class uh, class system, uh, in the class, uh, uh, we reflect the idea or uh, we took the idea of D.S. Lawrence, uh, the sons and lovers, in uh, which we reflect that uh, uh, protagonist, uh, not a uh, pro protagonist, and uh, here idea of the uh, individual, individual, individuality, not a, refer, not a refer as a class system. Okay, now anyone else? So, Divya, after the emergence of modernism, we define the role of the artist in society. Okay, the emergence of the we define uh, and the role of artist in society. Uh, by artist of uh, uh, the uh, artist of society in modern literature uh, by promoting or uh, uh, their understanding of uh, expressionism or uh, subjectivity and uh, each individual uh, or uh, individual elements we took in the uh, redefine as the modern or artist uh, society of modern era. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone, myself Himali Kappa. Today I am going to give a presentation on exploring the cultural landscape of modernism from literature to architecture. Here is my personal information. Understanding modernism and introduction, modernism was a big deal in the world of literature and art. But what exactly was it? Critics like Harry Levin have tried to take this question, but there is still a lot of debate. Most agree that modernism was a period of breaking old rules and traditions, celebrating new ideas and ways of thinking. While some major modernist uh, figures are still around, the main energy of the movement has, has faded. Now we can look back with more detachment and try to define modernism with confidence, even though there are still many interpretations floating around. It's like trying to describe a shape shifting creature, everyone sees something a bit different. Literature in modernism, in modernist literature, Rabindranath Tagore underscores the vital connection between language and the essence of literary works. He emphasizes the limitations of translation, likening it to an uh, effigy that uh, deceives but fails to capture the original's vitality. Tagore expresses remorse for this indignancy, asserting that true, true comprehension can only occur, occur in the original language. Reflecting on the cyclical nature of literature, he suggests that great works undergo expansion and contraction influenced by historical events like the French Revolution. This highlights uh, modernism's exploration of language, authenticity, and the impact of societal upheavals on artistic expression. 
architecture in modernism. In the mid 20th century, there was a debate about the relationship between English architecture and modernism. Architectural historian Nicholas Poisner argued that argued for an English approach to architecture, emphasizing rationality over decoration. Despite initial resistance, advocates like Poisner so, uh, sought to integrate modernism into English identity, claiming it was compatible with Englishness. They even argued that modernism was indigenous to England, creating a myth, myth of English modernism. This highlights efforts to reconcile modernism with English architectural traditions during this period. Culture in modernism. In modernism, culture was a big deal. E. Eliot, in his essay from 1948, talked about how modernists were uh, worried about culture, whether it was local, national, or global. They were all mixed up together. Some scholars looked at how different, how different regions had their own modernist movements, showing that being local didn't mean being backwards. Others like Eric Aronoff said that American modernism was all about culture and arguing about what culture even meant helped create the field of American studies. Sancha Bahman studied, studied writers from different countries and languages, showing how they all shared this feeling of sadness and loss called melancholia, which was part of modernist culture. Overall, these scholars are showing us how modernist writers dealt with big ideas about culture in their art. Modernist introspection. Modernist introspection explores how writers like Henry James, Marcel Proust, and Virginia Woolf looked inward to uh, understand the working of the mind. They believed in recording uh, thoughts as they appeared and examining the patterns they formed. This introspective approach allowed them to delve into the dark places of psychology and illuminate complex emotions and experiences in their works. While some some critics emphasize the influence of psychology, uh, psychoanalysis on modernist introspection. Others point, point out its roots in late 19th century psychology. Despite differing views, they, are, they, are, they agree that modernist literature is characterized by a deep exploration of psychological introspection and interiority. Conclusion. In conclusion, modernism was a transformative movement in literature, art, and architecture, characterized by a break from tradition and the Celebration of new idea from Rabindranath Tagore's exploration of language to Nicholas Pesner's effort to reconcile modernism with English architectural traditions, and from T.S. Eliot's uh, reflections on uh, culture to the introspective works of writers like Henry James and Virginia Woolf, modernism encapsulated a period of profound exploration and innovation. Despite uh, its uh, fading energy, modernism continues to inspire and challenge our understanding of creativity, culture, and the human experience. You are all excited. Thank you. If anyone has a question, please. Thank you. Hey, Malik, my question is that why was culture important in modernism? Culture was important in modernism because it uh, mixed ideas of uh, global, local, and national identities. T.S. Eliot also said that modernists were uh, uh, very cared about their uh, culture in all forms. Uh, my question is: In your presentation, there is a reference to. Uh, Rabindranath Tagore's view on language and its uh, role in literature. Do you agree with him uh, or is there anything else you would like to add on the same? Tagore was uh, said that language is very crucial to understand. Uh, he said that he believed that uh, translation, uh, translation couldn't uh, capture everything. I also agree with him. And uh, real understanding only came from uh, original uh, literature. Thank you. Sir.
Hello everyone. Good evening. Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the stream of consciousness in a literature. Here are my some personal information, a table of contents. So we will start with definition and origin. The, the stream of consciousness is a concept in psychology and that refers to a continuous flow of the subjective thoughts, feelings and explanations that make up an individual consequence in life. It was uh, famously described by the philosopher and psychologist William James in a this book, The Principle of Psychology in 1819, here are some key points about the stream of consciousness. The first one is definition. The stream of consciousness in literature is like a continuous river of thoughts, feelings and perspective, flowing thoughts and characters. Mind instead the being a separate, each thought or feeling smoothly bends into our next, just like a half one stream for flow into the both another. It's all about the capturing the contents, the movement, and change the within the characters in our world. So, in a simple word, the stream of consciousness means uh, there is no structure about the, there is no structure of plot story. Just a writer wants to say is directly say it through the dialogues. Origin: the idea built on earlier philosopher concept like the association of ideas from a philosopher like John Locke and David Hume. But the James gave it a more unified historical concept. Conception is a stream rather than just a associated ideas and perspectives. He based uh, in on, on his own introduction about the nature of consciousness experience. It's become an influent metaphor and con concept in psychology, philosophy of mind and literary stream of consciousness writing style. Some key characteristics about the stream of consciousness. It's uh, described as a wonderful genre that's a uh, indirect Indirectly use user friendly because the writer does not need to think about the plot, try threads together, or create the credible characters. The writer simply thinks or lies down and lets the flow of thoughts, in impression, memories of fragmented idea, perhaps, and the association emerge and read together in a continuous stream. There is a no need for stru structure or logical connection. Incomplete thoughts can be interpreted by the new ones and the writer consequences uh, render freely from the idea to the next. Uh, in this, the work of stream of consciousness, we find out some incomplete uh, dialogues uh, and uh, it's uh, also unlock the new layer of understanding for readers. The important aspect of the capturing the raw worth and formulation of the thoughts into a words before those uh, formulation spread from the mind again. A stream of consciousness embers the fidelity, sp spontaneity and uh, unfulfilled unfiltered nature of the human thoughts process un unmarred by the convention of a narrative res resourcing. Notable author and works, uh, James Joyce, no more is the in innovative use of stream of consciousness in a novel like Ulysses and a portrait the artist as a young man. Joyce's work revolutionized the literary narration. In the work of Ulysses, we find out that there is a it's a protagonist, Blue, Blum Lurie, is uh, deliver a dialogue with uh, the 403,091 words. A single dialogue in that much length. And second is Virginia Woolf. Woolf, a uh, groundbreaking novel such as uh, Mrs. Dolevy and to the light of employed the lyrical introspective narration and deal into the inner lives of her character. The to the lighthouse and Mrs. Dollar. In the to the lighthouse, we find out the protagonist is a uh, whole novel just uh, saying about the way one day we will go there, one day we will go there, but in the end, we find out he can't do it. William Faulkner. Faulkner is a southern Gothic master, masterpiece, including the sound and the fury, and as I laying, as I laying die, use a frag fragment non in a narrative to capture to the flow of consciousness. Uh, in the sound of, and the beauty, we find out in the very first paragraph, it's uh, very confusing and uh, also is as well as very interesting. In this the paragraph, uh, he tries to describe the two players to be just playing the ball. And Mars Plut. Uh, Plut and Manipulant work in search of the lost time is a semi seminal example of the stream of consciousness technique, explore the memory trend perspection and the nature of subjective experience. The role of narrative. Stream of consciousness in literature utilize the first person narrative to impress the reader and the protagonist unfilled 
unfortunately the thoughts and emotions the directly voice directly convey the characters in your experience providing the ultimate and subjective perspective the second sound refers to the thoughts and judgment that comes after which tend to lose some of the freshness and richness of the internal impression stream of consciousness emphasizes the free association of thoughts reflecting the imagination moving quickly from one idea to the next idea creating new pattern out of the reality this technique allows the author to represent the and follow the human mind writing the memory reflection reflection and imaging in the crude non linear manner what makes stream of consciousness different uh syntax syntax and grammar stream of consciousness doesn't follow normal grammar and word order thoughts are stolen as they came even they incomplete or interpreted conjunction uh, like uh, italic dutch and ellipsis are used to direct differently show pause and change in thought uh, association idea are linked by personal experience and memories not always within a clear connection thoughts and can jump one from one thing to the another like how our minds wonder in real life character might react to what they see hear smell feel or taste repetition words or phrases might be repeated to show on character fiction on something uh, repetition helps to highlight to important themes or motifs in the story plot structure the story might have multi multiple narrative each within their own stream thought even might not happen in order or past might be shown through this memory the stream of consciousness the writer does not follow the any proper rules of the language or proper grammar or even we can say or not uh, he write out word by word he just uh, write his, oh, which in his mind even is uh, also incomplete sentence or many more things and also plot and story will not structure in a proper way and we find out the repetition of words where the dialogues and lines difference between the stream of consciousness and entire monologues uh, both the entire monologues and stream of consciousness include the presentation of the character's thought to the reader uh, entire monologue unlike the stream of consciousness the character thoughts are often the present using the traditional grammar syntax and usually have to clear logic prog progression from the sentence to the next and one idea to the next inter monologue are related to characters through as a conhand fully from the sentence as if a character is talking to him or her life in the stream of consciousness we can we can't find it for the same thing in the stream of consciousness like a uh, uncomplete dialogues uh, not a proper structure of plot and many more things contemporary connection contemporary interpretation while the high modernist novels of joyce wolf and other are ground breaking contemporary writer have continued the experiment with uh, and define the stream of consciousness narration author like don delis jenny smith and jonathan suffern for have incorporated the elements of stream of consciousness into the post modern style minority perspective writer from minority minority, minority and under president ground have used the stream of consciousness to previously manage life in our experience psychological and moods of being example include the african american writer like tony morrison and happy snick writer like the john dees new media the stream of consciousness has influenced the narrative media beyond the novels such as films and that attempt attempt to capture the unfriended the subjective experience through the technical like a voice over jump cast and embed the storyline stream of consciousness also unlock the new layers from a social media and uh, social media influence photo fiction the genre of photo fiction writing fiction and uh, autobiography has proven a fertile ground for stream of consciousness writing that blurs distance boundaries between a writer's lived experience and their imagination in a conclusion exploring the stream of consciousness is a literature and will the interior working of a human mind allowing the readers to deep dive into the characters thought emotion and experience this narrative technique pointed by the writers like jam joyce virginia would break a traditional line of storyline often the fragment yet uh, impressive journey through the psyche thought is exploration literature mirrors the complexity of human consequence human consciousness 
inventing the readers to the image with the character on the profoundly imitated level and challenging them to consider the narrative consider reconsider the nature of storytelling itself some work cited if you have any question regarding my presentation do feel free to ask my question is that how does the stream of function and has character development in the story stream of consciousness help character help readers to enhance the character like uh, when we read the any particular novel on stream of consciousness that time a writer and writer helps us to involve uh, ourselves into the character and feel his emotion is taste is smell or just like a, we are in the characters so this feeling are more important in the stream of consciousness Okay, what are some common features of stream of consciousness writing? Some common features like uh, uh, incomplete dialogues, unproper structure or storytelling, and Hello everyone, myself Priyanshi and here I am going to give presentation on the origin of the word expressionism. These are my personal information. These are table of contents. So, firstly, this is quote uh, which shows the importance of expressionism in uh, various, arts, uh, various forms of arts. No matter how things turn out, one will have to admit that expressionism was the was the last common general and conscious attempt of a whole generation to instill new life into art, music, and literature. Introduction Expressionism, artistic style in which the artist seeks to depict not objective reality but rather the subjective emotions and response that objects and in events arouse within a person. In a, in a broader sense, expressionism is one of the main currents of art in the late 19th and early spontaneous, spontaneous self-expressions are typical of a wide range of modern artists and art movements. Expressionism can also be seen as a permanent tendency in Germany and Nordic art for at least the European Middle Ages, particularly in times of social change or spiritual crisis and in this sense it, from, it forms the converse of the, of the rationalist and classic, classicizing tendency of Italy and later of France. More specifically, expressionism as the distinct style or movement refers to a number of German artists as well as Australian, Austrian, Australian French and Russian ones who became active in the years before World War I and remained so throughout much of the interwar period. Historic, historical context, origins, movement in expressionism, literary analysis, and impressionism to expressionism. First, origins. Expressionism emerged in Germany around 1905, characterized by its avant-garde approach with exaggerations and distortion to the subjective perspective of 20th century life. Women in Expressionism 
movement played a significant but often acknowledged role in the movement. Their contribution and the portrayal of women in expressionist works have been subjects of scholarly research. And literary analysis. The study of German literary exp expressionism has uh, attracted uh, interdisciplinary attention but has been less influenced by gender studies despite calls for the examination using feminist and gender theory. Then last one is modernism and expressionism. The study of modernism including expressionism has seen significant innovation helping to place the, uh, place the movement within historical trajectories and social changes. Impressionism to expressionism. Impressionism, a brief word. Impressionism essentially emerged as a literary movement in France during the 19th century. Unlike realism and naturalism, which, which aimed for exact impersonal reproduction of material objects, Impressionism took a different approach. It sought to create impressions of these subject objects capturing the in-heart characteristic arising from sensory and emotional experiences. Impressionist writers focus on how things appear to the observer at a specific moment up into photographic snapshots. In essence, realism uh, strive for objective representation of material objects and impressionism captures subjective impression and sensation. Expressionism, the shift. As we move forward, we encounter expressionism, which gained prominence between ex ex approximately 1905 and 1925. Here are, here are some key points. First, roots of expressionism. Expressionism evolved from earlier literary movements, particularly realism and naturalism. Artists drew inspiration from visual arts and theorists like Wilhelm Boringer's concept of abstraction and empathy. Expressionist, expressionist aimed to break away from naturalistic representation and explore new forms. Second, characteristics of expressionism, intellectualism, expression, uh, expressionist works combine intellectual depth with dramatic gesture, graphic vision, and intense emotions. Artistic freedom. Expressionists push to boundaries, experimenting with form and content. Third one, oracular and artistic. Expressionism embarked the oracle as a source of wisdom and creativity. Then social turmoil, the period witness of events including World War I, revolution, and economic instability. Then Apollo polymorphous. Apollo, the Greek god, serves as an illustrative figure for this evolution, essentially depicted as the strong, healing, and patiential bringing deity. Apollo's nature transformed over time. By the 5th century, he became associated with intelligence, oracles, and the arts. In summary, while impressionism focused on capturing fleeting impressions, expressionism delved into intellectual exploration, emotional intensity, and artistic freedom. These two shifts reflect the broader uh, historical context of the early 20th century. This is a quote. Uh, which uh, which was dedicated by Clary uh, Clarier Amber, uh, and uh, it shows the difference between expressionism and impressionism. The difference between writers and reader is similar to the difference between expressionism and impressionism. Writers want to express themselves, and readers want to be impressed. Then the French connection. The French connection exploring the artistic influence and contribution of Gustave More, Henry Matisse, and Gustave Geoffroy. First one is Gustave More, a prominent French artist, played a pivotal role in shaping the concept of self-expression. 1891 and 1898, More taught at the Apple Days Art in Paris. Moret's teaching focused on allowing artists to express themselves potentially 
empathic spontaneity 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 and individual temperament had remained a renowned painter studied under more at the at the ecole des uh, beaux arts from 1892 to 1897 Mendes so absorbed Morris the uh, techniques particularly the idea of self expression as the artist's true mission Mendes believed that an artist's expression should naturally flow from their temperament Last one is post to with Gaffroy a French art art critic and writer played a significant role in promoting modern art and artist in his work on Morris also emphasizes the centrality of expression in art by not a painter himself is advocate and analysis influence the trajectory of french art during this transformative period then german expressionism the term expressionism essentially had french origins but it found a new home in germany notably the literary arts borrowed from visual arts particularly from art historians like wilhelm boring boringer's work abstraction and empathy 1908 provide a theoretical basis for the practice of abstraction it highlight how artistic work was varied across epochs leading to different forms of expression german expressionism emerged around 1905 and continue until approximately 1925 it it echo uh, it uh, echo encompass a period of immense or social and political upheaval including world war 1 and subsequent revolution characteristics of german expressionism emotions simplified forms heightened use of color spirituality and mysticism philosophical influence and key figures and works of expressionism first one is de group the bridge a group of expressionist artists found in uh, dresden in 1905 their manifesto emphasized a rejection of academic norms and a desire for artistic freedom key members are kalpner karl smid rotfeld rotlock and emil nolte then edward munch a significant artist of modernism munch pioneered expressionist painting his iconic work the screen a painting 1893 and what is profound angst and anxiety capturing the early modernist era spirit the painting is autobiographical reflecting monk's experience of hearing a piercing scream of nature versions of the scream are housed at the monk's museum in oslo and the oslo national gallery and wesley canning's scene A bridge between post-impressionism and expressionism, Kandinsky was a pioneer of abstraction. His painting, The Blue Rider, 1903, exemplifies the shift from impressionist to expressionist styles. The piece of piece of a uh, piece of abstract nature invites interpretations, with some singing of baby in the rider's arms. Emil Nolte. Nolde, part of the German expressionist group De Brock, the bridge created intense and raw art. His work, Dance Around the Golden Car, 1910, reflects the movement's evocative spirit. The painting captures primal energy and emotions. Then Ernest Ludwig Kirchner, a founding member of De Brock. Kirchner played a pivotal role in shaping expressionism. His works explore inner turmoil, societal commentary, and the human experience. Notable painting, uh, paintings include self-portrait as a soldier and other expressive pieces. Expressionism beyond art. Expressionism extends beyond the re- uh, realm of visual art to influence literature and culture at, at large. Friedman suggests that artists and writers reflect and express the impulses of their culture through distortion, altering the world around them and the classical forms accepted as standards. This distortion can be symptom of culture decline or a subversive act against contemporary values, offering a glimpse into the conditions of our awareness. in our relationship with our modes of thinking 
and feeling. In literature, this expressionistic distortion manifests as a means to communicate higher truths or portray incoherence, reflecting either a vision derived from private insight or despair over a loss of coherence. Kafka and Roach's work exemplified two modes of distortion that have shaped modern sensibility. Kafka's realistic sense of distortion examines the relationship between consciousness and objects, while Roach's inter uh, internal exploration of consciousness expands perception into vision. In conclusion, Expressionism began as an avant-garde movement around 1905, characterized by a desire to express subjective emotions rather than objective reality. Artists like uh, Vincent Van and Albert Monk influenced its development using vivid colors and distorted forms to convey inner turmoil and emotional intensity. The movement gained momentum with German groups like De Group, emphasizing personal expression and spontaneity. The impact of expressionism extends into contemporary art, inspiring artists to explore human emotions, challenge norms, and innovate artistically. It paved the way of movements like abstract expre expressionism and neo-expressionism, which further explored the expressive potential of art. Expressionism legacy is evident in the continued emphasis on individual perspective and emotional depth in art. So I end up end up my presentation with a quotation of Emil Nolde. Uh, expressionism is not to be learned, it is to be confessed. These are my references. Thank you. If anyone has a question, then feel free to ask. So, Priyansh, who are some key figures associated with expressionism? There are many key figures which are associated with expressionism. Uh, we can uh, see in presentation like Edward Monk, uh, Kindersky, uh, Kindersky, Emil Nolde, and other prominent writers or artists, uh, ex expressionist artists, were included uh, in key figure, uh, key figure of expressionism. Where did expressionism organize, originate? Expressionism originated in Germany and Australia, and uh, key, uh, key, pro key promi uh, prominent artistic expressionism like uh, Edmund, Edmund, uh, Mar Edmund Monk, uh, Mar uh, Kindersky, uh, artists, and other artistic groups were uh, uh, emerged uh, in uh, cities like uh, uh, cities like Martin, So first of all, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, on the very last day of our presentation seminar, on the 9th of April, I'm going to present Echoes of Conflict, exploring the world poetry and world literature through the ages. Yes, here is my academic information. And uh, here we go. Uh, on the morning session, Kusum very deeply ex uh, expressed the world poem and the word poets and definition of word poetry in literature. So I'm not uh, going to uh, express this, but uh, let me begin with the main topic. The, here, the horrors of war, uh, poetic reflection from ancient civilization. Uh, 
if we talk about this horror of war, then throughout the ages we can uh, see that uh, in if in epic battles if we talk about then ancient epic like Iliad and uh, in Indian mythology we have Mahabharata and Ramayana. Yes, epic the uh, courage and heroes of war showcasing uh, the bravery of brutality of ancient warriors. Yes, uh, lamentation of uh, the fallen poems of uh, poems from uh, Mesopotamia, uh, uh, Egypt, and China gave uh, voice to the grief and sorrow experienced by those left behind more the loss of uh, the loss of loved ones in conflict. Uh, moral dilemmas. Uh, philosophical work explores the difficult uh, choices and ethical uh, quandaries faced by leaders and soldiers, uh, questioning the justification uh, for violence and uh, the cycle of uh, retribution. Yes. Voices of uh, battlefield, battlefield, war poetry from the Middle Ages and uh, Renaissance. The Middle Ages and Renaissance uh, so so an um, uh, outpouring uh, of uh, powerful war poetry, giving voice to the harsh realities of conflict. Poets like Wilfred Owen, uh, as we have in syllabus. Yes, the poem of Wilfred. The and uh, and uh, scientific. Yes, captured the grim experiences of soldiers on the uh, front line, uh, painting vivid portraits uh, of the horrors of war. Uh, we find that uh, the Renaissance and middle of the ages are the period when uh, people are using kind of uh, uh, bell arts, lyrical bells, yes, and uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, poetic devices in their works. So how they portrayed the uh, war theme in their works. So we find that during that time we have not the technologies, right? So they are used, um, in a way portraying uh, heroism throughout their works. Uh, here are some examples, the songs of uh, uh, Roland, yes, uh, the Iliad, John Dunn's. Yes, Iliad is quite uh, uh, Historical example. Here I have made mistake because I don't have to put this in this column. Yes, it's not from the answers. Uh, romantic uh, romanticism and the glorification of conflict. The romantic era of the nineteenth century shows uh, 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 a of uh, idealized depictions of war and conflict. Poets and artists glorified the he uh, heroics of battles, painting the uh, string sentences of uh, uh, Glenn, soldiers and uh, dramatic uh, clashes. Yes, this uh, romanticized view of war stood uh, in the street, uh, sorry, star constant uh, to the green realities uh, experienced by those on the battlefield. Uh, yet the public uh, uh, appetite for tales uh, of uh, martial, gro martial glory remained uh, strong during this period. Yes, if we have example, that Byron's poem, The uh, Destruction of uh, uh, Senecrine, and the Denison's uh, work like the uh, charge of the light bridge. Uh, we have an example from this time duration. Yes, the delusion, uh, disillusionment of the modern era, World War I and the birth of war literature. The, in this, uh, we have a kind of a characteristic like uh, shattered ideas, the horrors of uh, World War I shattered on the romantic notion of war. Yes, uh, leading to the uh, profound disillusionment among the poets and writers. They grapple with the realities of uh, machinized warfare and the uh, uh, devastating uh, toll on human life. Uh, graphic realism, new wave of war literature emerged during this time of period. Yes, I don't think of uh, flowery language and glorification of uh, favor of strength and uh, graphic depiction 
of the uh, front lines poets like uh, uh, Owen. Yes, uh, more witness uh, the brutality of trench warfare. Uh, anti war sentiments also we have on this time duration. The war poetry of this era expressed deep anti war uh, sentiments, challenging the notion of uh, uh, patriotism and heroism. Writers sought uh, the expose uh, the uh, futility and trauma uh, of conflict, rejecting the propaganda that had uh, previously driven young men. To enlist, yes. Uh, in previous era, we have uh, we have an example like they are um, uh, uh, romanticizing war. But after the World War One and the uh, post World War One era, we find they are in a way criticizing war. They are frustrated by the war and the uh, authorities. Yes, a postmodern perspective. Uh, this is conflicting uh, the myth of war, questioning heroism. Challenging nationalism and resisting militarism. Postmodern world literature challenges the traditional heroic uh, depiction of conflict. This work uh, uh, constructs the myth of war, questioning the uh, nationalist, the uh, theoric, uh, militaristic uh, ideologies uh, that have long dominated. Uh, and the representation, representation of the battles, uh, most modern uh, authors uh, seek expose to harsh realities and human cost of wars and this is the glorification of violence and conflict. In the in this kind of, this postmodern era, we have the writers who more uh, glorified or uh, in a way uh, imply more realistic way towards the war. Yes, uh, portraying war poetry or war literature. Because we have a uh, number of technologies in nowadays. The uh, uh, types of war are different than uh, in previous uh, time. They are only using the uh, kind of uh, um, uh, swords and kind of elements, but the, nowadays we have uh, technology, so they are using uh, guns and kind of elements. And also in uh, literature, that we find that they are uh, portraying uh, um, kind of patriarchy or heroism in the literature, and now they are following realistic mode. Yes. Okay, exploring gender, race, and uh, Ethnicity in war, women uh, on the uh, front lines, yes, uh, heroic um, uh, minority soldiers, yes, the diverse uh, perspectives also we find uh, in the war, yes, uh, representation of heroism and glory in the war poetry, the courage of a courageous soldier that we find the war poetry often uh, depicts the bravery and the selflessness of soldiers uh, fighting for war uh, their uh, for their country portraying them portraying them as a noble heroic figure yes also we have uh, the poem uh, like soldier yes the hero yes also in the, this kind of themes we find in soldier and the hero yes uh, portraying a secret uh, sorry Patriotic sacrifices. Uh, many poems glorify the ultimate sacrifices, those who uh, give their lives in battle, uh, framing their uh, deaths as a uh, patriotic duty. Yes, uh, in uh, also we have we find that dark, similar kind of themes in the poem Target, uh, the fear. Yes, how uh, they are going to lose their lives for the nation but in a way they are fearful in that what if i am not able to uh, go at my home yes uh drum victories certain war poems celebrate the glory of uh, military victories yes painting a picture of a triumphant soldier uh returning home in honor yes the timeless legacies the wedding uh, representation of heroism and the glory in war often seeks the entire uh, these values as timeless uh, uh, universal ideas. Yes, uh, gender perspectives in war poetry. War poetry has long been uh, dominated by male gaze. Uh, 
but the rich contribution of uh, uh, women uh, women writers provide the crucial uh, counterpoints yes poems uh, by female poets and uh, poems offer uh, intimate insights into the uh, gender experience uh, of war its uh, impact on the home front uh, and the unique struggles uh, of females uh, uh, commented commentants from the own uh, heroin the depictions of trench warfare uh, to Vera Britain's point reflection on loss the uh, literary con canon of war is uh, expanding uh, to include the diverse voices that challenges traditional notion of uh, patriotism and heroism yes in conclusion we can say that the enduring legacy of war literature is very profound impact of war on uh, the human experiences has uh, left and uh, indelible mark on the literary landscape from the epic poems of ancient civilization of uh, to the searing uh, testimonies of uh, modern con uh, conflict the themes of uh, uh, combat laws and the struggle for meaning having meaning have captivated readers across the ages yes um, as we look uh, to the future the enduring power of war inspired literature to illuminate the complexity of human condition uh, remains a testament to its timeless relevance. Yes, here are some works cited. And thank you. If you have any questions, then please. Oh, yeah. My question is, what were the literary forms and convention common, commonly employed by war poets in the Middle Ages and Renaissance and how did they contribute to the portrayal of war? Okay, so Priyanshi, my answer to you is, uh, the war poets and Middle of the Ages, uh, they are more portraying uh, war literature through the bell arts and so on, and, and, as I have uh, mentioned, yes. and. Um, uh, epic form yes uh, so in a way they are uh, portraying patriarchy and heroism in their uh, poetry yes and uh, they in a way uh, uh, highly patriarchy yes they are not able to find the role of women in the uh, war yes the sufferer the kind of uh, human loss in the war they are just uh, portraying patriarchy and heroism through the war so this Next. Priya, according to you, what is the major change that occurred in the port portrayal of the war literature in modern times compared to the other past century? Yes, uh, as I mentioned that uh, they, in a way, the major challenge is the, uh, the shifting of more realistic uh, um, and anti-heroic depiction that author or writer wants to follow is the main reason, yes, uh, and they, in a way, uh, following the uh, psychological and the moral and the social uh, consequences in their uh, uh, write of uh, yes, work of uh, so that is how we find if for example we have the great adventure yes the iliad and odyssey and the great epic we find and they are portraying the great adventure only and uh, if we focus on uh, this kind of uh, modern time then they are portraying war in more realistic way yes so uh, if we read both the literature then we find the major difference so that is it thank you
war or uh, uh, promoting the war we can say that uh, once uh, they should uh, see that uh, his fellow soldier situation they definitely uh, change their uh, philosophy and uh, just not glorifying the war suicide in the trenches poem by ritik prit sasun written in uh, 1970 portrait uh, portrait the despair and disillusionment experienced by soldiers during the uh, world war 1 sadness hopelessness a young soldier tragic and a war prince uh, in this poem there is a, a simple uh, boy like who is uh, living his life uh, and uh, enjoying but uh, while at the battle uh, ground uh, he in the winter like there is a lake of alcohol and there is a but too much uh, minus celsius and at that time uh, he is uh, just full of fearness and uh, a uh, depressed and by at that time he committed suicide like uh, by showing the soldier sacrifice the poem asks people to understand the true cost of war and uh, work towards peace instead and uh, in the last line of the poem the poet says the hell where youth and laughter go like he is telling that the war is the hell and there uh, is the many young uh, people uh, that Uh, that is, and uh, he sacrificed laughter. You know, is the good things in life, and just die. Transition from the, the war poem to the anti-war poems. Where is the charge of the light brigade and the soldiers celebrate the heroism and the patriotism of soldiers? The anti-war poems provide a powerful counterpoint by exposing the brutal realities and devastating consequences of armed conflict. These anti-war poems offer a stark contrast to the romanticized notions of war found in works like Tennyson. Instead of glory, glorifying this spectacle of battle, they give voice to the disillusion and the romanticized and the pessimist viewpoints. Poems like Wilfred Owen, The Dull Set, Decorum East, and The Secret Session, Suicide in the Trenches, strive to shatter the idealized depictions of war by despising sorry depicting uh, its graphic horrors dehumanization dehumanization effect and uh, psychological trauma he challenges the justification for war and forces the reader to confront the true human cost of violence and conflict conclusion the war poem celebrate the heroism and patriotism of soldiers transforming military events into the legendary epics Uh, in contrast, the anti-war poems provide a searing critique of the brutality, futility, and dehumanization effects of war, giving voice to the disillusion and the traumatized. These poetic battlegrounds reflect the enduring legacy of war poetry and its power to shape our understanding of armed conflict, allowing us to grapple with the moral, emotion, and philosophical complexity underlying to humanity. Propensity and propensity for violence. Uh, these are my references. Thank you. Now, if you have any question, you can ask. Uh, I question in what way does uh, does at decorum is 
thus as the powerful enlightenment of war and its devastating consequences on humanity. Uh, in the poem, does the decorum is the poet uh, is the uh, um, showing the reality of the world, like what is happening in the battle wars, uh, when they are coming back and uh, in the context of humanity, uh, when they are coming back, the one uh, of his uh, fellow soldiers are dying, and they are just seeing that, and this is the worst feeling ever that someone is dying in front of you, and you cannot do anything for him. Like uh, they were just injured and uh, just too tired and. Uh, uh, he is dying and you are not do anything for him. Uh, in that poem, the, his, the fellow soldiers die and they all not are able to do. And uh, in the uh, last stanza of the poem, we can see that the uh, poet, uh, poet tries to say that the ones who see that uh, situation, uh, they situation and glorifying the war, glorifying the war, they should uh, uh, definitely change their philosophy towards the glorifying our war or uh, uh, being promoting war. Yeah, that's just my answer. Thank you. Hello everyone, myself Asha Rakhut. I am going to present you about the topic uh, with Rupert Luke as a one point. These are my personal information. So what is one poetry? One poetry is a genre of literature that uh, uh, responds to the experience and uh, order of a uh, uh, Most of uh, uh, work poetry written by soldiers, civilians and observers. Uh, to seek uh, to convey the uh, emotional, psychological, and physical impact of war. Uh, war poetry often addresses themes such as loss, trauma, patriotism, disillusionment, and the human cost, uh, cost of uh, conflict. Uh, uh, I ask them GPT to how uh, engaging with the war poetry reflects. Okay. Uh, 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 how we uh, to read us in uh, what point they did uh, he firstly said that uh, it can evoke empathy and a deeper understanding of the life experience of uh, those who have endured work both on the battlefield and on their own front. The readers may find themselves dealing with the brutality and uh, senselessness uh, of war as well as the resilience and the courage of individual part of them in its midst. Uh, uh, war poetry is not necessarily anti-war. It is however about the very large questions of life, identity, identity innocence, guilty, uh, loyalty, courage, compassion, humanity, duty, desire, death. It's respond to this, uh, this question and it's a relation of uh, immediate personal experience to moment of a uh, national and uh, international crisis uh, gives over poetry an extra literary importance. Uh, on what that uh, even Shakespeare's themes uh, when this after session, not of course because sessions is a greater artist, but because of the subject I uh, uh, in the uh, was ever no memory and uh, nobody has the courage to understand them until there are no way left to tell what happens. <clears throat> uh, it is a uh, uh, line by the sh uh, Shadow of the Wind by uh, Carlos Luz uh, in, uh, in the uh, Shadow of the Wind of uh, uh, Japan portrait, a war revenge uh, 
Poland and comment there are something about that videos that epic and tragic for like the old English uh, alleged poems, the Arthurian romances, Doris, Mother of Tolstoy's War and Peace, the literature of the great was ever uh, uh, the human perspective and the uh, very fabric of literature. And uh, uh, other uh, Melky's uh, article, uh, he argues in uh, Team of Grain, Right of the uh, World, uh, he explained in a Wyndham uh, that there uh, is no clarity, everything swift, the old rules are no longer binding, the old truth are no longer truth, right like sp spills over on, into wrong, order blind into chaos, or love into hate. Uh, ugliness into beauty, law into uh, energy, civility into severity. The vapors suck you in. You can't tell uh, where, you, where you are or wh why you are there. And the only certainly is overwhelming uh, ambiguity. From uh, ancient Nordic uh, barracks to Messiah folk songs or Red Indian sagas, uh, war has uh, always been a predominant theme in literature. Uh, I uh, here are a piece uh, by Rupert Duke. Uh, he explained uh, uh, this is work, work poetry, how we consider this work poetry. So, introduction of uh, the poem piece that uh, had written during uh, late 1914 uh, by World, uh, uh, first, World War First Time. And uh, yes. The analysis of the poem. Uh, the, uh, in, in this poem, there are total fourteen lines, uh, uh, dividing into two two stanzas. First stanza is a uh, uh, eight line, uh, uh, so it's known as a octet, and uh, second uh, uh, made of six lines, so it's known as a sestet. And uh, uh, here the poem poet uh, begins with the. Uh, uh, now God be thanked who has matched us with his uh, power and uh, got our youth and weakened us from sleeping with uh, hand made sure clearly clear uh, eyes and sharpened power to turn as dreamer into clownless sleeping. Uh, In first line of uh, poets uh, begins to thank God uh, of, uh, go, uh, thank God to for the researching and living uh, our to, for also giving a uh, uh, thank you to God that uh, giving a birth of the, in this life and uh, what will appear uh, that uh, will bring something for that uh, on good and uh, God uh, bless his country what in uh, uh, order with the youth awareness for the unawareness and uh, third land uh, uh, with hand made a short clear the eyes and shape Turn a stream into clownless. Uh, it's uh, like a, a, a word is a, like a pool or a river that uh, we that, that, uh, jump into and uh, clean our body that reflects uh, 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 that uh, our uh, dirtiness. Which uh, people usually going to clean less their body from dirt. Second, and uh, glad from a world grown old and uh, old and uh, weary. It's uh, it's mean that uh, uh, they are about having no sense of humanity for the family or society. And he, he people who are not doing their duty and uh, have no love of their country. And uh, it, uh, that means uh, here the. Uh, uh, well, grown old and old and very it means the uh, world is going to die in the uh, hand of uh, these uh, careless people and second uh, leave the sick heart uh, here sick heart means not uh, physical illness but uh, sick means uh, sick means uh, those uh, soldiers who are avoiding the fight uh, here look uh, mention him uh, as a Sick heart and also called as a half man. Half man means uh, who uh, continue to insert them to calling half men who are uh, uh, escaped from for the war, war and uh, 
he shows the, uh, no respect for them and uh, uh, in the shape they are men but in their hearts but uh, men are not so. Second, oh, we who uh, have no shame, we have found release there where there is uh, no in no way but safe as mending. Nothing broken save this uh, body lost but free. Nothing to shed, uh, shed the laughing arts long peace there. In, uh, in this land, uh, 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 look, uh, uh, look, uh, look, uh, look, uh, Explain to uh, those souls who are uh, shamed to avoid their duty to, uh, to achieve an everlasting and peace of uh, both mental and mental relief and uh, uh, in their grave with death. They, they find uh, themselves in uh, heaven where uh, there are no illness, no grief, uh, only sleep. But uh, afterwards, he can sleep uh, calmly. So he, because he have a vow that I work for my family, I work for my country. Yeah. But only agony and death has ended, and the worst friend and uh, enemy is but dead. He are the only. Uh, um, Again, you can interrupt this uh, uh, happiness in the fight uh, hard, but for sure it will taste by death. In addition, look uh, personify death as a friend and enemy. Uh, we can say it a friend or kill, but uh, uh, he means that death is enemy who ends our life and a friend also that uh, a part of our soul uh, in our, into our body and we, we can sleep forever. The same thought goes uh, for uh, Rehana and Demisar in 2015 when they said death has the power to deprive of spirit, but it, uh, it also brings eternal peace. Uh, in this poem, we, we, so we can find two major things. First, love. Uh, love. Uh, that uh, souls have a love for this, their country. And second, peace. Uh, uh, we can uh, uh, find that uh, uh, look uh, actually mean by what is the naming is poem peace but, uh, that uh, uh, peace uh, there are uh, also war in uh, most of the murdering people and blood and it's a bad thing but uh, uh, where is uh, to have peace inside own soul and one should uh, one should do the right things which satisfy God with uh, or uh, fulfilling what a God needs a person to do. So in conclusion, uh, Rupert Brook uh, 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 in poem piece uh, addresses the value of honor of fighting in war. He uh, instructs the readers that war is a gift and uh, a solution, not a problem. Uh, those who are able to fight should do uh, so willingly. With great pride and honor, as so he gives his all support to men by writing many poems about war and flattering them in an honorable uh, way. As so he is proud of such a uh, soldier, he uh, does so in order to inspire them to fight and protect their country that is in the end their homeland. And he wanted everybody to have a uh, uh, changing thought about healing war as a cause of uh, pointless uh, destruction look uh, so war as a great cause to bring about inter internal peace not only to one soul but also to the entire society. These are my references. Thank you. Now we can Ashna, my question is what contrast does the poem draw between peace and the state of the world during war time? Uh, he has uh, 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 what I peace uh, that uh, he also mentioned that uh, we, uh, peace uh, uh, we can uh, peace by uh, 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 fight against our uh, uh, fight, uh, fight in war and uh, find peace uh, after fight. Uh, there are also physical pain, uh, but uh, 
uh, it's a uh, temporary, but uh, after the war it, it is uh, uh, sleeping uh, climate is uh, very peaceful and uh, uh, it is permanent. Uh, that uh, we are uh, we are uh, feel proud that uh, we are fight for our country, our family, our family are safe for uh, us only. I'm sure my question is what does Luke suggest about the importance of honor and love in the world, uh, in the old world? In my PPT, I mentioned that uh, Luke uh, insulted uh, by calling a uh, uh, half heart that uh, who are uh, afraid of uh, escape for, for the world. And, uh, the only uh, those uh, soldiers are either to honor that uh, who fight. Uh, fight uh, Against war and uh, uh, for uh, love in a uh, is love for country. So very good afternoon to everybody. Uh, today uh, is the last day of our presentation of paper number one zero. Uh, uh, sorry, one one zero. I am going to deal with the topic of animating uh, conflict of uh, depiction of war in enemy. So uh, in this topic, I am uh, going to take uh, uh, the point of the point of view of the Japan war and uh, how uh, after war Japan is uh, going in downfall and how is uh, uh how is uh country is going uh in very uh war, war in a war they are very uh, poorly uh, going right now uh this is my personal information uh in the table of content i will uh, talk about first historical background and then uh, concept of war in japan and uh, then i will come to the uh, main part of the any enemy and japan how they connect uh, with the uh, war so first uh, let me jump in the historical background. So, Japanese historical uh, consequence has been uh, predominantly linear rather than cyclic. Uh, sorry, silk uh, uh, in a contrast to Chinese thought, which had more uh, cyclic elements. Uh, Japanese Japanese creation means an early uh, chronicle uh, like uh, Kochiki and uh, Neo Shoki uh, established a linear uh, imperial line as the central piece of Japanese history. Uh, this become a uh, core part of Japanese identity. Uh, this uh, line uh, historical model based on, upon, uh, on the uh, unbroken imperial succession of best uh, major uh, crisis uh, during the uh, major restoration of the uh, nine, uh, 1868. Uh, the restoration uh, fulfilled the uh, ancient myth of uh, imperial rule, uh, but uh, this left Japan's ensure of uh, how to uh, reconstruct science of historical purpose and destiny. Uh, the rapid uh, transition to modern nationalism and the state during the uh, uh, period uh, dis disrupt, uh, disrupt uh, the traditional uh, links between time, myth, and historic uh, history in Japan. The led, uh, the led to the uh, identity crisis as the Japan struggle to find a new myth of concern to guide the nation. Uh, in the article, uh, also Wilson, uh, Wilson suggests that the Japanese experience provides an irony and uh, prophetic gesture. Uh, as a modern uh, is, uh, is society has more uh, broadly confirmed the uh, warning uh, of a traditional uh, nationalist narr uh, narrative and the need to rethink the relation between time, history, and national identity. Uh, the, uh, what is the uh, concept of war in uh, Japan? So as we uh, know, the uh, Japanese war uh, in World War II, uh, 
the the a big the big breakdown of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. The the the, the big fact uh, come in the in the uh, idea of the book. So uh, the meaning and the understanding of World War Two for Japan is still elusive and complex. Uh, there are many different names and perspectives used to describe Japan. Japanese alone uh, involvement and reflecting is a diverse and open ended uh, conflict. In the post, uh, post war period, there, uh, there was a struggle between uh, Marxist and left wing interpretations that show Japan's uh, Japan's war uh, uh, as a rooted in uh, fascism, uh, imperialism, and uh, capitalism, and more uh, pro uh, US uh, rep liberal interpretation that focused on the uh, decision making progress leading to fail help. Uh, in the uh, 1990s, uh, a newer approach uh, emerged that looks at the experience of ordinary Japanese uh, citizens and the uh, multiple front of Japanese war, uh, include the China, China, China the Pacific and the Soviet Union. Uh, this helped uh, uh, complicate the star ideological narratives. Uh, however, Japanese Japan has still struggled to come to terms with the scope uh, and nature of its wartime actions, and often maintaining a victim mentality to focus on uh, adding bombing rather than Japanese own city in Asia. Uh, so uh, we know the, the uh, biggest uh, uh, war of uh, the Asia is uh, concluding the uh, uh, Japanese uh, uh, in the, the atomic bomb uh, developed by the uh, US. There in uh, Nagasaki and uh, Hiroshima, uh, where the Japanese like the uh, 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 continue very uh, high, uh, high class country, but uh, in uh, in that war, uh, war time, they are like, oh, so many civilians are uh, like uh, uh, placed away in that uh, atomic bomb attack. Uh, so uh, in the uh, article also highlight the uh, uh, persistent uh, difficulties Japan has faced in developing a coherent and a uh, comprehensive understanding of its role and action during World War II. Uh, due to the war uh, com complexity and the post war ideological dynamics, uh, and uh, Japanese own sele uh, selective memories and unwillingness to fully confirm his uh, war time in the past. So, uh, uh, Japanese, uh, Japan uh, country is still trying to uh, make uh, their country is, uh, very fulfilled after the uh, war. Uh, still, there's going of the uh, war, how the, the war is very effective in this country. Uh, uh, let me come to the, our main main uh, theme of the uh, this topic, uh, uh, the study of, uh, between the Japan and the enemies. Of, uh, the, is the, the enemy series is uh, like a very, uh, most of the, uh, not in the, uh, uh, like in uh, our like culture is not that famous, but uh, they are uh, giving that idea of uh, how the uh, war also conclude and how the civil uh, civilization will be uh, in because of the war. Uh, so uh, the study also uh, analyzed that the uh, uh, depiction of social cultural element in the enemy series of attack mode title using the content analysis method. Uh, the series name is uh, attack mode title. Attack mode title. That the the uh, the point of the title is uh, was seen as a uh, monster. And uh, this uh, this Titan also uh, in a way they uh, uh, like collecting the places in the people who are like uh, 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 the connection between the uh, world. Uh, so the researcher came to examine how social culture theme are visualized in the anime and their uh, relevance to the this, uh, representation of a social culture condition and the issue in Japan and globally. Uh, also the this. Uh, this is also showing in the, the war of Japan. Uh, the researchers are uh, used a um, uh, main step model of a, a inductive categories developed to uh, in the, uh, inductively identi uh, identify and uh, categorize uh, the social culture element, uh, uh, social culture element present in the particular time is uh, energy. Uh, the analysis result uh, in uh, 10 uh, different, different categories, uh, categories of social culture. Uh, that include the uh, theme of terror and trauma, war and military, people and race, religion, language and communication, nature and uh, uh, resistance, uh, agriculture, uh, value, nationality, and social class. Uh, in the continue, we can say the study uh, study found in the series of the of time that use symbolic affinity of uh, represent Japanese culture and a social culture of uh, condition 
adding depth and uh, complexity uh, to the animation while conveying the created intention on uh, in the future thing. Uh, and the, the researcher Sayama uh, 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 conclude that also conclude that uh, in the uh, incompletion for the symbolized in animated work uh, all significant uh, potential to enrich the audience experience and deliver more profound narrative and that establish stronger connection with the audience own experience and understanding. As I said, uh, the, this uh, the series also uh, very connected with the uh, real real time uh, uh, board uh, fiction that uh, have, uh, happened in, during the that, that time of the Japan. Uh, the article provides a detailed uh, analytics framework uh, for examining how anime can be used as medium to explore uh, in present complex social social culture issues and theme. Uh, the, we, we can uh, conclude in the Japan. That that person uh, will be the plate uh, after the war that uh, after war and after the war uh, attack uh, uh, the, the finding uh, uh, finding of our insight that would be like Indo Indonesian animator is creating work that convey meaningful social culture message through visual storytelling so because of uh, like that type of series uh, there are uh, people trying to understand uh, what's going on in the uh, world and what uh, the significance of the war is uh, going to take place after, after. Uh, uh, the main point the uh, connection of work between the any and Japan. Uh, so uh, in the paper uh, this also I will be that uh, the time but the uh, Titan is uh, Titan you know uh, as I say the most uh, you know attack so Titan can be seen as a representation of humanity's own monstrous tendency and growing on a uh, gothic literature theory. Uh, the Titans embody culture fear and a represent design. Uh, in the paper, there are two main interpretations of the title. Either uh, this is uh, seen as the uh, enemy, or uh, we can, as I mentioned, the title is bomb of Hiroshima. So, uh, in a way, the uh, title is seen as the uh, atomic bomb of uh, the uh, connection between the Japan, Japan, Japan and Hiroshima. Or uh, representing the victim of that attack. So, uh, the attack, uh, as I said, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki are never by US. Uh, that uh, how uh, is seen as the uh, and uh, this is the perspective and makes the audience question who is the true monster? So, who is the true monster in the uh, ja uh, Japan uh, when war happened? Who is the, is the US is the real, uh, real enemy, or uh, there is the other arm also there to uh, 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 between the uh, war was uh, during that time? Uh, so, their paper also analyzed how the lack of race, racial diversity uh, in the main character reflects the Japanese struggle. To regain his culture identity after World War II. Uh, so, in the Japanese uh, struggle, they are also uh, the character, also, uh, you can say, uh, as I, here I show the picture. Also. This title is the monster uh, just uh, running, uh, sorry, uh, just walking by, and first they are destroying everything. Like they are destroying lands and people also. So, how uh, we can connect this idea with uh, uh, that uh, uh, war? Uh, so, uh, applying the monster theory concept, the paper also discussed how Titans represent the blurry of boundaries and the desire of their powers and their role in policing the strict human society within the world. Uh, so, they are, they are uh, coming, uh, uh, coming from the, uh, the walls, uh, they created the walls and, and how the, the uh, walls also uh, determine the uh, uh, human society. And the paper also says the government may be true monster in the Titan and using them to control the population. And uh, this raises the question about the origin and the true nature of the Titan, or we can say the monster. Uh, so, overall, the paper provides the detailed gothic and cultural analysis how the Titans function as a symbolic representative of humanity's own monster uh, tendency in the city. Uh, as I uh, mentioned, that uh, in Japan, Japan war, how the uh, the people are, uh, uh, in a way, uh, for no reason they are destroyed. Uh, for, because of the, uh, only uh, because of the war, they are, uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, the players are uh, mo uh, mostly destroyed. And the Japanese, uh, the Japanese country are still trying to develop their, uh, that uh, area, their places, and how they are uh, seen as well. Uh, so, in conclusion, we can find out the understanding of World War II historical con constitution. Uh, so, in uh, any way, a type of action symbol like the Fear and struggle, as also I began uh, uh, connect with the Japanese uh, people and society. 
they also highlight the job of the Mongolian challenge. Very concept in war time past and in uh, evolving uh, historical identity. So, uh, or their offer valuable insight into culture represent in historical narrative in both anime and Japanese society. So, we can, uh, if we are connect, uh, connect with the Japanese war and this uh, anime, so we can find out easily that how uh, people are uh, destroying, uh, you know, no that uh, they are not even included at the war, but still they have to suffer. So, uh, these are my references, and thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, or you can ask. Sorry, my question is that how Japan's understanding of World War II been influenced by differing ideological perspectives? Uh, as I as I mentioned about the uh, war situation, uh, understanding of the World War II is different. Uh, there are also different uh, interpretation are given that uh, uh, what Japan is done uh, in a way that. Uh, in, uh, in a more way, they have been the World War are happened, and uh, uh, Japan is understanding that uh, in that uh, because of that war, they are uh, some way they are destroying themselves also, and uh, they are also uh, in uh, so many in uh, we can say society also that uh, the Japanese are uh, Japanese people are uh, in a way they are in war. They are also uh, influence that uh, uh, that uh, that. Because of the attack, uh, because of the attack, the Japanese culture are uh, in a way uh, destroyed, and in a way they are uh, trying to understand what, what is the uh, what is their do and in, in the uh, doing their period period of time. So my question is: What challenges does Japan face in developing a unified understanding of its role in World War II? Uh, yeah. So in uh, World War, during the World War, uh, there uh, like they, when they destroy uh, there uh, the two uh, country like uh, China and uh, Korea uh, uh, during that period of time they, they both uh, both are there in the. Uh, 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 developing the idea, the face of the Japan. But uh, Japan, in a way, they are uh, very destroyed by the uh, the war. So, uh, uh, in this way, very uh, very destroyed uh, by the U.S. of that time. So, they are, because uh, they are also not uh, trying to help, and uh, their role, uh, like in a way, uh, like in me, uh, like not not in proper way, to, or we can say we can find uh, uh, openness of that idea. And uh, because of they are also enemies there, so they are, uh, can uh, develop also. Uh, so that is my answer. Thank you. Hello everyone, good evening. Uh, today is the last day of the presentation, uh, paper number one, uh, one zero. My topic is uh, Equals of Conflict, a comparative analysis of war poetry and Bollywood patriotic song. This is my personal information. Uh, this is the table of content which I discuss. First, uh, war poetry. Uh, in war poetry, um, main theme is the patriotism and national identity. Uh, in uh, uh, war poetry, to, uh, poetic words is pride, grief, determination. Uh, the artist writes are used to inspire, motivate, and mobilize the public during time of conflict. Uh, in war poetry, to uh, uh, in see imaginary symbolism, rhetorical revenge to steal uh, nationalism sentiments. Uh, this information about 
go to the marriage and to uh, Pakistan, Indian Pakistan was in uh, 1971. Uh, a person, uh, song to become a part symbol to see national uh, love for one's country uh poem and songs similarities first theme patriotism sacrifice and duty uh second a uh, tone emotional tone practice uh, of one's country uh by uh ever song to love and dedication towards the homeland nationalism a uh, poem to celebrate love for one nation and uh, a person song individual in the face of adversity. Cultural context uh, reflects the patriotic uh, sentiments prevailed during war time while uh, captures the spirit of contemporary Indian patriotism. Difference between poem and song. First, uh, the soldier is a poem. Is Bollywood song. Time period was the soldier written by during the World War One, and uh, a button uh, is song to Indian Pakistan War in 1971. Style soldier uh, poem, formal, uh, rich imaginary, a button song, contemporary, emotionally charged, imaginary, use uh, vivid imaginary of nature and nostalgia from England. Sorry, for England. A uh, song to harsh reality of war, celebrate the cultural uh, diversity of Indian audience, uh, targeted towards literary audience. Uh, while uh, a Vatan song, Bollywood movies for a wider Indian public. Uh, conclusion uh, The comparative analysis, war poetry and Bollywood patriotic song reveals both similarity and difference. Uh, song and uh, po poem to see. Uh, conflict uh, uh, in nationalism, uh, war poetry, to, uh, experience of war and futility, uh, while Bollywood patriotic song to evoke uh, nationalism and heroism. Despite this distinction, both forms underscore the profound impact of a conflict on societies and the role of uh, shaping collective memories and identity. Uh, this is my references. Uh, thank you. If any. Question you ask me. So, Pushi, as you mentioned, the the uh, work song. The what is the real uh, real uh, device are commonly used in war poetry and bowling patriotic song that evoke emotion and convey message of nationalism. Yes, sir. Uh, both war poetry and uh, song to reality device like a metaphor, uh, uh, a personification, uh, a re a repetition, evoke language to portray uh, 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 emotion and convey message of nationalism. Uh, both uh, poetry and songs to uh, reflect the uh, connection of audience to theme of uh, conflict and patriotism. And nationalism. My question is that how does the advancement in technology and media influence the production and reception of uh, world poetry and Bollywood patriotic songs over time? Yes, Asha. Uh, both world poetry and uh, Bollywood songs, patriotic songs, to uh, influence the uh, 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 broadly to reach uh, in world wide and uh, patriotic song of uh, uh, digital media and uh, to and technology to enhance to uh, uh, connect with uh, audience uh, many examples of uh, song uh, film web series like um, uh, the forgotten army as a achievement of the achievement that is not forgotten Many examples to uh, connect with audience uh, to uh, this uh, 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 with uh, 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 patriotism, uh, nationalism in the audience. Thank you.
Hello everyone. Uh, today I will deal with the topic struggles beneath the surface. Understanding inner turmoil in painters play the birthday party. These are my personal information. Table of contents. So let's firstly discuss about Harold Pinter. Harold Pinter was born on 10th October in 1930, London, England. Uh, he was died on uh, 24th December in 2008 in London. He renowned English playwright. He was renowned English playwright of post World War uh, Second. Uh, he is known for complex and challenging dramas. He is uh, notable for use of understatement, small talk, and silence to convey deeper character thoughts. He also uses that pause and silence to uh, and uh, that makes uh, his uh, dramas in place uh, different from others. Uh, background he studied he studied acting briefly at the royal academy of dramatic art started as a professional actor before turning into uh, play writing uh, this information is taking uh, taken from britannica let's see about his key work uh, the room and the dumb painter was uh, considered as his uh, debut plays uh, the birthday another famous works are the birthday party and the caretaker and the homecoming uh, uh, let's see his child and themes that plays feature amb uh, ambiguous plots, complex characters, and uncertain endings. Often explores that fears, jealousies, loneliness beneath or, uh, dialogues. Like we can find that uh, that type of ambiguity and uh, that various types of uh, expressions. Pinterescu dialogue disjointed, uh, ambivalent, uh, with uh, significant silence, uh, silences. We can find in his works. He awarded Nobel uh, Nobel Prize for Literature in two thousand five. Pinter works are powerful, original, and known for their psychological depth and innovative use of language. This is also from Britannica. Now, let's discuss about introduction of birthday party. Uh, the title is The Birthday Party. Author is Harold Pinter. Uh, it was produced, firstly produced in year 1958, first published in 1959. Uh, it falls under the category of drama. A style of this, we can find the comedy of meaners. Setting of the play, we find that shabby rooming house and the uh, main character was, central character is Stanley Weber, who is lazy, young, border. Uh, two mysterious men, Goldberg and Macken, uh, Mac Bowles, a uh, landlady, uh, Petty Bowles, uh, Mac's husband. And another minor character we can find is Lulu. This is also from Britannica. Uh, let's see overview of the play, the plot summary. Uh, Stanley's false a sense of uh, security is uh, shattered by the arrival two uh, uh, menacing men like we can find that at first uh, 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 in the opening of the play we can find that uh, there is a secure environment for Stanley that uh, he is just waking up and uh, uh, and uh, connect, uh, connection with that uh, landlady and Betty we can find that and uh, and uh, while going through the uh, all the eggs we can find that at the end he is uh, not that much feel secure uh, due to these two men. The men claim to uh, punish Stanley for undisclosed crimes. The landlady organized a birthday party that descends into violence and uh, terror. Themes we can find that paranoia, isolation, treat from the outside world. Dialogue uh, style we can find that frequent poses, disjointed conversations, and non squatters. Uh, impact we can find that, uh, uh, that established Pinter's unique style of drama. Explored existential anxieties and hidden traits in uh, mundane settings. This is also from Britannica. Now let's explore the character. That Meg. Meg is, uh, as we see earlier, he is the uh, land owner, uh, that uh, owner of that uh, uh, boarding house. Meg uh, portrayed as a weak but good uh, natured slow who engages in constant meaningless chatter and rival domestic actions. Her uh, sloppy behaviors are uh, exaggerated and intensify sense of meanness and inadequacy. That uh, uh, despite Stanley uh, talk to her in very rude way, but she is always uh, carry towards Stanley. We can see that in, in many adaptations, we can find that it's a depiction. Uh, uh, and uh, he is uh, sorry, she is uh, like a mother caring nature. Uh, next character is Stanley. He is a central protagonist of the play, struggling to assert his identity and control against looming threats. His rent again uh, makes behavior seems excessive, uh, garnering sympathy for his plight. His final transformation symbolizes the uh, complete loss of his humanity and agency. Like, he is under control of someone now. At the last, we can find that. Uh, next is Megan and Goldberg. 
that omniscient and uh, uh, threatening figures who terrorize strangely using physical uh, intimidation and the bizarre routines their meanness is emphasized through the looming perspective and uh, heightened tension like we can find that they are uh, like uh, uh, they uh, by their appearance we can feel that uh, that terror uh, environment uh, next character is a uh, pity uh, max uh, passive husband uh, who never done anything uh, that means who is very passive in uh, some actions like we can find that uh, he is always sitting and reading newspapers uh, so he serves as a background figure of highlighting stanley's escalate behavior uh, this uh, this uh, information is uh, taken from harriet dear and irving dear's uh, article winters the birthday party the film and the play uh, now let's uh, see critical insight of the characters. That Stanley is fear, hostility, hostility towards Goldberg and Mick and Miss uh, stem from un subconsciously that perceiving them as a threatening father figure. Like we can find that uh, that uh, child has that fa father figure uh, uh, fear. We can also find that that type of connection that uh, we also know uh, with uh, Stanley, and we can also uh, inter uh, interpret them like they are uh, power. Uh, power themselves and uh, uh, Stanley is uh, also that uh, uh, common people we can also uh, interpret like that uh, next character is Meg she satisfies Stanley's unconscious desire from infantilizing, nurturing uh, mat uh, maternal figure uh, there enables his uh, regression from adulthood like uh, her stupidity and solvedness uh, provoke irritation in Stanley uh, an underlying source in his fear being trapped in childlike dependence. Uh, like uh, from uh, Stanley's perspective, he he was uh, feared like that uh, uh, he might depend on uh, for everything uh, on Meg, and uh, that's why he also sometimes uh, behave rudely towards her. This is uh, this is taken from Simone O. Lester's uh, reflections on Pinter's The Birthday Party article. Uh, Goldberg and Meccan, they are interpreted symbol, uh, symbolic surrogate father figures, like whose power and dominance over Stanley uh, taps into deep seated audible fears. Uh, their cruelty in uh, destroying Stanley's uh, sanity represents the omnipotent omnipotent and threatening force father experts over the son in uh, audible complex that audible complex is the uh, one type of uh, uh, psychological term when we can find that uh, uh, that father and son's relation in that uh, and uh, uh, like parent and child's relation uh, next minor but uh, important character is lulu that stanley's treatment for her by placing her on a table and we can find that uh, she is uh, uh, such a way that uh, 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 that subconscious anger and sexual jealousy rather than uh, a literal rape attempt that her uh, overt sexuality with goldberg may arouse stanley's unconscious unconscious anxieties and that he tries to uh, compassionate for impolite this is from an article uh, the psychological depths of pinter's the birthday party that uh, we can find that in that goldberg speech that uh, goldberg went and desperate lost we can find that uh, uh, the exa uh, uh, layers of cultural wisdom but reveals that emptiness and cliches that uh, illustrate Pinter's concern with the inarticulable uh, origins of selfhood and experience. Stanley's symbolism, that broken glass, we can find that in the uh, second act when they are uh, trying to torture Stanley's at that time, uh, they broke the Stanley's uh, glasses as, as they want to uh, uh, steal uh, his uh, eyesight or his, uh, we can say that uh, his knowledge uh, from him. That broken glasses symbolize the limitations of rational male gaze, represent the struggles with the conventional understanding the facing human irritation. Uh, in interiority, we can find that uh, it is uh, we can take in both ways that it limitations of rational male gaze, and when that broken glass, we can also take this uh, uh, as the, like someone trying to snatch his eyesight. Uh, overall thematic concerns that uh, painters dramatization of inner turmoil through protagonist haunted by questions of origin, identity, and meaning that who I am and Control, control of someone like Stanley has that uh, question that I am in control of someone and uh, throughout the play we are in that suspense that uh, what is the next and we are not uh, uh, that uh, feel that connectedness to uh, uh, play that uh, plot of play profound uh, psychological distress manifested the character uh, crisis and fragmentation innovative dramatic techniques embodies or uh, convey these themes to audience this uh, this uh, information I have taken from Reiner Alice's 
Harold Pinter's narrative and presence article. Exploring subconscious motives in the play, like paternal figures, audible anxieties that, that we uh, talked to earlier, uh, talk earlier that Golden uh, Goldberg and McCann, uh, they are subconsciously perception of them as a father father figure. Uh, their uh, uh, intrusion and uh, domination of Stanley could represent the omnipotent uh, uh, threatening power of father over son. That matern uh, mat sorry, maternal attachment and regression. We can also find that Meg and uh, Stanley's connection, like motherly connection with Stanley, which is also uh, connected uh, by that we can say that uh, they are subconsciously dependent over, uh, over each other. Uh, uh, this also I have taken from this uh, information uh, from Lesser's uh, same article, Simone O. Lesser's The Reflection on Pinter's The Birthday Party. Uh, sexual anxiety is an important step, uh, we, as we see in the Lulu's case uh, that uh, her uh, rape, we can find that it is uh, unrecognizable that Wood did uh, rape on her, that tapping the subconscious uh, through ambiguity, like a uh, whole the play we can find that uh, play affects ambiguity create an open space for audience to pour in their own free floating subconscious fear and anxieties we can interpret in our uh, by ourselves lack of concrete explanations forces viewers to become a convert uh, cultures and uh, projecting subjective unconscious unconscious content this is also from same article theme of chaos language and absurdity in winter the birthday party chaos Confusion and the ambiguity of identity. Like Pinters weaves various themes to depict life uniquely. Uh, characters have wedge uh, and ambiguous uh, pasts, adding to chaos and confusion. Audiences must uh, decipher the truth from uh, chaotic and confusing uh, events. Like, uh, for example, we can say that uh, Stanley's mysterious past and uncertain identity uh, like contrib uh, sorry, contribute to the overall sense of chaos and confusion that we are uh, not aware about that uh, who are right, that uh, who was right, that uh, Stanley himself that I have uh, done nothing uh, bad in my past and then uh, these two men, Go Goldberg and Macken, that uh, at the end of the, throughout the play, it, it is the mystery that uh, what is the past of Stanley and uh, they are, who are uh, these two people uh, who tries to, uh, tries to punish this Stanley. Uh, this information I have taken from I am uh, Edu's article, reading of Harold Pinter's The Birthday Party. Language is a vessel of unspoken struggles. As we discussed that Pinter uses Pinter poses and uh, silent uh, and uh, to, uh, uh, to describe that intense situation. So uh, to, uh, it became uh, by this, uh, the language is uh, sparingly but effectively Pinter used. That the character expresses discomfort and guilt through their uh, subtle insults. Like uh, uh, we can find that dialogue between Stanley and Meg that they, uh, uh, they constantly uh, disrespect each other uh, and as well as they had respect for each other also. Uncovering the absurdity of existence that we can find that uh, by this we can find that uh, that uh, existential crisis feeling of that who are they. That uh, birthday party mirrors the confusing ambiguous uh, reality of human life that who are we? Uh, we. We can also feel that type of absurdity of existence. This is from same article. Inner turmoil and conflict in birthday party. That uh, Stanley's uh, psychological. That we can find that uh, what is the main uh, point when we find that inner turmoil. That uh, Stanley's psychological struggle. That Stanley's destruction of his past career as a pianist hint, uh, hints at eternal conflict at, at the end turmoil. Like we can find that uh, he says that I am a pianist. Uh, uh, I uh, I have done uh, 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 concert in my past. And uh, now we can find that uh, he is also conflicted uh, in inner uh, his inner self. His regression and dependency on Meg reflect that unresolved psychological issues. Like Goldberg, and next one is Goldberg's dominance and manipulation. That uh, we can find, uh, find that in this play that uh, Goldberg is also symbolizes that power of manipulative language. That how uh, manipulation that uh, 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 on someone's face he is. Using that sugar water term and at someone's face, at, uh, but at Stanley's, he is the, like uh, dominant. He using dominance and manipulative language. That uh, dominance, uh, one type of that uh, Stanley represents that struggle for uh, possession and dominance. Uh, 
symbolic triumph of Goldberg, and that's why we can find that uh, Goldberg is as an overpowering stainless uh, internal struggles and. Uh, uh, Stanley faces external moral, social, family obligations also. Like not only Stanley, but we can find that uh, in a uh, Mackin case also, we can find that he says that uh, that uh, blow wind in my mouth. So at that time, we can find that there is overpower or triumphness in that. So in conclusion, we can say that uh, Harold Winters play the body body explored uh, inner turmoil through its various characters. Besides Stanley, we encounter Max innocence and the uh, menacing presence of Goldberg and Mackin. Pinter skillfully used dialogue and silences to reveal the hidden struggles and fears of each character. Through this exploration, the play shows us that everyone carries their own burdens and conflicts beneath the surface of uh, their daily lives. The birthday party is a powerful portrayal of human complexity and highlighting the intricate emotions that shape us all. Like we can find that inner conflict uh, uh, affects the play's whole story. These are some references. And thank you. Now, if you have any question, feel free to ask. Opinion: How does Max Wong and uh, inviting nature console her underlying uh, feelings of loneliness and desire for companionship? Yes, Kushi. Like Max Wam and uh, inviting the nature of uh, concealer underlying feeling. Like we can find that uh, she is uh, not mentally stable. Like she is uh, always asking for uh, someone's suggestion. Like uh, uh, to he, she is also asking for uh, breakfast. That like, uh, how was that? Uh, how was uh, bread? How was cornflakes? So we can find that uh, uh, by uh, her nature uh, to talk. With everyone, he, she is trying to conceal that uh, her feeling of loneliness. That she is always want to constantly be with someone. Uh, so we can find in that next. So Pallavi, according to you, how does the uncertainty, uncertainty in the character's past and motiv uh, motivation to affect the overall tension of the play? Uh, yeah, we can. As uh, I discussed in this uh, presentation, that uh, we uh, we never know about the past of uh, the characters. That who is Stanley, who is Megan and Goldberg, and uh, what was their uh, re uh, relation, and who is that uh, organization. Uh, so we we, uh, we were never uh, that uh, confident or clear about that past. So it uh, uh, it created a conflict. That uh, the, uh, what is the truth? That uh, who is Stanley and uh, they. Uh, uh, what he done uh, uh, something bad in her, his past? We have that question. So the past uh, motivations uh, that uh, we can find that affect overall tension in the play. That's it from my side. Thank you. Very good evening, everyone. My name is Rahul Desai, and today I'm presenting my presentation on the topic of the concept of uh, printer uh, SQ in modern theater. This is my self introduction. This are the table of content which I explain in this uh, presentation. Uh, let's start with the, about uh, Harold Pinter. Harold Pinter was one of the great uh, uh, writer. Harold Pinter was a master technician in the use of languages and uh, cinematic uh, technique use of uh, in uh, uh, plays and uh, theater. He was an English playwright uh, who achieved international renown as one of the most uh, complex and challenging uh, post World War II dramatists. In uh, 2005, he won the Nobel Prize for uh, Literature and uh, in his uh, works of art and uh, uh, Plays, uh, he used uh, several themes like uh, elimination, violence, 
comedy of minas and of fear comedy of uh, minas is like uh, something dark and something uh, uh, darkness uh, in background of the characters uh, is notable works like the birthday party the homecoming the dumb writer uh, sorry dumb waiter and he known for his use of language and uh, cinematic style uh, introduction of uh, Peter F. Liu. Peter F. Liu is a uh, 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 style uh, which uh, uh, use the different kind of uh, language and uh, 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 writing style. It is uh, an adjective used to describe a particular atmosphere and environment in drama. Environment like dark, uh, uh, dark and uh, so dialogues in which we are find the technique of Peter F. Liu. This style often creates an atmosphere of tension, ambiguity, and the psychological depth in the theater. <laughs> the birthday party, uh, the homecoming, and many more works are most famous example of the uh, Pinterest style of writing. Uh, Harold Pinter was explore this style in this place. Pinterest adjective uh, resembling uh, or characteristic of the works of the English play uh, playwright. Harold Pinter, in particular, by having the sense of uh, minus and uh, uh, featuring a dialogue marked by many poses. Uh, in which key elements of uh, Pinter SQ, in which uh, we are uh, identified the uh, silence and pose. Uh, silence is like uh, silence is uh, speak louder than the words, uh, and uh, silence and poses play a crucial role in Pinter SQ works. Following for the unsaid uh, speak volumes and unsaid uh, truth. Pinterest dialogue is often sparse, uh, fragmented, uh, and filled with uh, repetition, reflecting the character's struggle to communicate, communicate with uh, uh, circumstances and communicate with the uh, reality. Use of absurdity and dark humor, symbolism, and uh, subtext to convey the deeper meaning, social critique. And the commentary on the societal issues, power, uh, power of struggle and control dynamics uh, within the relationship and non-linear narrative structure and fragmental uh, dead uh, timelines. Uh, there are some several themes uh, uh, we uh, which we find in the Pinterest to theater like uh, darkness, uh, love, loneliness, uh, comedy of minas. Uh, communication and verification. As we see the film of uh, the birthday party, in the uh, in which we identify the interrogation scene, uh, uh, interrogation scene and the verification of uh, past, uh, the past, uh, past uh, uh, convenience and uh, effect of the pa past in real life, in present life. Uh, silence is uh, reputed to be uh, among Pinterest list popular place because it uh, rests heavily on metaphorical images that become incre increasingly difficult to uh, disappear uh, as the play progresses. Like uh, absurdity and the human condition, guilt, secret and uh, uh, hidden motives we find in Pinterest theatre. Uh, now let's uh, see about the impact on modern theatre. Uh, the impact of the uh, impact on language, cinematic style, and the uses of elements, uh, theme structure, use of technology, and many more things. Uh, cinematic close-up scene, uh, close-up to the face uh, scene, and uh, many more things. So it's say uh, larger the uh, silence and uh, close-up scenes uh, say uh, louder than the uh, which we find the louder than the uh, speaking word. The net effect of Pinter's magnification of uh, trivia in the theatre is it to create a greater sympathy for character in the theatre viewer, in the theatre audience. Audience are a uh, uh, large audience are connected with this idea and uh, uh, modern theatre idea and uh, condition of human uh, human condition. It is provided they are dark human human condition and uh, stage of performance. It connected with the audience and audience feel the power of techniques, uh, graphics and storytelling, and also silence. Interesting technique in practice, directors and actors often focus on mastering the use of poses and silence uh, to convey meaning in Pinterest play, uh, creating a sense of atmosphere and tension through uh, staging, lighting and sound design. 
enhances the printer printer rescue experience for audience. He, he used uh, some several types of music, sounds, and uh, lighting effect. The use of pause and silence technique uh, we can observe in the play the birthday party. Winter rescue is a characteristic of Pinterest play, uh, which are noted for their use of silence to increase tension, understand, understand underestimate, and uh, uh, riptic uh, small talk. Uh, Pinterest drama is dark, and his language is full of many uh, menacing poses. These are the notable uh, Pinterest plays uh, like uh, the caretaker, dumb waiter, uh, homecoming, and the birthday party. These are the works uh, showcase the painter's master mastery of uh, language structure, uh, structure and character development. Uh, criticism on uh, painter as a theater, uh, like uh, uh, there are so many critics. Uh, painters are uh, critic on the painter's art is uh, compared uh, to Ibsen, uh, Tolstoy, Chekhov, even Shakespeare, and he is considered to be a most influ influential. Playwright of the 20th century, whose plays are most more lasting and uh, rewarding than Beckett's, uh, precisely uh, because he roots their power struggle in uh, uh, sublimely uh, drawn social reality. It's uh, mostly uh, depend on uh, reality and uh, dark humor. The first kind of silence when no words is spoken is marked in the play text by three dots. Poses and silent, uh, silence, as we see uh, recently, see uh, the specific importance of poses in Pinterest theater uh, has been noticed by a number of critics and theater people. Pinterest uh, in film and television. Pinterest influence extends beyond the stage to film and television, with uh, adaptation of his work and work inspired by his style. Uh, in in the opening outdoor sequence. Uh, of the film, which seems at the first to be all meaningless section, filled with uh, swelling, visual and in, uh, in, incolate in uh, in sound. Uh, as we example, as we take the example of uh, the birthday party film, uh, in the starting, uh, we uh, we are uh, visual and uh, see first the scene as a absurd uh, absurd scene. Uh, chair scene and uh, sound, uh, very disturbed sound. And uh, the interrogation scene of the birthday party film is uh, also show the dark side of past events and uh, Pinterestque style. In conclusion, the concept of uh, Pinterestque in modern theatre uh, continue to captivate the audiences and challenges artists to explore the complexity of human experience, room, uh, human conditions, Harold Pinter as a Pinter's legacy as a playwright and uh, his unique style of uh, storytelling have left an indelible in mark on the world of theater. Uh, these are the this is a wonderful quote by uh, Harold Pinter. Good writing excites me and makes life worth living. These are the uh, references or citations. And thank you. If you have any questions, you can ask. So my question to you is, can you provide uh, some examples from Bollywood or Bollywood movies that exhibit a uh, uh, Pinterest style? Yes, Pulvi. I am uh, uh, provide some examples uh, from Bollywood movie like uh, uh, we take, uh, uh, yes, uh, Heather, which is a uh, adaptation from Shakespeare's Hamlet. In Heather, uh, character of Heather is uh, so uh, create so many tensions. Uh, around us and uh, dark humor. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's also so the condition, uh, human condition. And uh, then second, uh, Andhadun, uh, it's also create attention, dark, dark side, darkness. And uh, one series, uh, Fog, Frog, Fog, uh, F O R G E, uh, Fog, uh, uh, which is also TV series and uh, it's also connected with the
my question is to you what uh, role does ambiguity play in the deductive step Yes, ambiguity is a very uh, uh, useful, uh, significant uh, uh, role play in the uh, painter skill style. Ambiguity is uh, show the dark side of uh, uh, characters. Something in dark in background and past event happen. Uh, something dark in past event, and uh, it's also show the uh, it's also show the hidden meaning, hidden meaning of the uh, characters. Which uh, we, uh, which characters are not uh, express or tell to some others? Uh, yes, this type so we can see the ambiguity in the player interest. Thank you. Thank you. Very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, today I am going to deal with the topic uh, various interpretations of the play in the birthday party. This is my personal information. This is my table of content I am going, going to deal with. Uh, about author, I will not discuss more because uh, previously uh, Rahul Bhai and this uh, is discussed. So I will say uh, one thing about him. Uh, he was uh, also an uh, outspoken uh, political activist and was involved uh, in various causes, uh, including human rights, anti-war uh, efforts, and the fight against censorship. Uh, the birthday party. Uh, the birthday party uh, by Harold Pinter is a, a seminal work of 20th century British theatre, which unfolds uh, in a seaside boarding house where a seemingly uh, innocuous birthday celebration for lodger Stanley Weber uh, descends into choral chaos with the arrival of mysterious strangers, <coughs> Goldberg and Macklin. As the play progresses, uh, Goldberg and uh, Macklin's true intentions remain shrouded in uh, ambiguity, leading to a series of uh, unsetting uh, interrogations and uh, psychological manipulations that broke uh, themes of uh, identity, power, and the absurdity of human existence. Painter's signature uh, use of uh, cryptic dialogue pauses and dramatic tension creates an atmosphere of uncertainty and menace, leaving audiences questioning the motives of the uh, characters and the uh, underlying nature of the events unfolding on stage. So the play uh, challenges uh, conventional uh, theatrical norms and invites multiple uh, interpretations cementing its status as a classic of modern drama that continues to captivate audiences and scholars alike. Uh, this I uh, refer from Chan uh, The Various uh, interpretations of the play. Uh, dive into the enigmatic depths of Harold Pinter's The Birthday Party when interpretations abound and layers of meaning await exploration. As a uh, uh, in this play, there are six characters who constitute a microcosm of society in particular. They uh, mirror the fundamental economic divisions in society. So the division between uh, exploiters and exploited, Goldberg and Magnin are, are of course the exploiters and symbols, both of the uh, unknown forces that control the life and the uh, managers, operators and decision makers. Who understand uh, understand those forces well enough to use them for their own ends? This I have taken from a JSTOR article written by uh, Simon Lesser O. Uh, the article uh, "Reflection on Pinter's The Birthday Party: Contemporary Literature." Now, to comedy of minutes. Comedy of minutes. Uh, uh, 
uh, is a term coined by the British playwright uh, David Camden in the 1950s to describe a particular style of black comedy in the theater. So it refers to the plays that use humor to create a sense of unease and tension, often through the portrayal of dysfunctional characters and situations. <coughs> An absurd uh, play is a form of theater that uh, emphasizes the irrational and illogical aspects of the human experience. Open through the uh, use of nonsensical dialogue, uh, which I use in this play, I have not mentioned here, but shorter imagery and disjointed plot structures. So, plot uh, structures overview. Uh, the, the play unfolds in a seaside boarding house where uh, Stanley resides, disrupted by the arrival of Mysterious uh, strangers, Goldberg and Magnin. Tension escalates as their intentions grow ominous, climaxing during uh, uh, Stanley's birthday party with a fever uh, pitch interrogation. The aftermath sees uh, Stanley taken away, leaving unresolved questions about identity and power, concluding uh, with an uh, ambiguous reflection on human existence. Now, the interpretations. Uh, we will go with uh, first uh, artist and society. Uh, the artist Stanley, whom society claims uh, back, forms a uh, comfortable bohemian, uh, bohemian existence and who is uh, compared by society to conform uh, to its own standards of conduct and behavior. So, Lulu is a character, uh, is the inspiration of an artist who is uh, seduced by the agents of uh, a society or evil uh, forces working to curb the freedom of speech or expression of artists. Second, psychological interpretations. Uh, <coughs> as we can see uh, in this play, uh, psychological exploration where uh, uh, Goldberg and Magnin uh, starts uh, torturing uh, Stanley and uh, questioning him constantly. With their interrogation tactics and undermining his sense of self. Second, uh, political interpretation. Some view the play as an uh, allegory for uh, totalitarian uh, regimes with Goldberg and Magnin, symbolizing oppressive authority figures who seek to control and uh, manipulate in individuals for their own ends. Third, societal uh, interpretation, where in this play uh, reflects societal, <coughs> societal themes of alienation and uh, isolation, highlighting the individual struggle. To find meaning and connection in a world that feels uh, increasingly absurd and disconnected. When uh, Stanley, uh, when they say uh, Goldberg and Magnin forced uh, him to then celebrate birthday, but when he don't want to, uh, he don't want to uh, celebrate his birthday. Uh, next, gender and feminist interpretation. There's a room to interpret the play through a, a feminist lens, examining the examining the portrayal of female characters like. Mag and Lulu and analyzing their agency or lack thereof within the patriarchal structures depicted. Next, uh, exist, existential interpretation. The play uh, can be seen as an existential exploration of the human condition with uh, characters grappling with questions of identity, purpose, and the absurdity of existence in a world that seems uh, indifferent uh, to their struggles. So, the interpretations over here provides uh, <coughs> different lenses through which uh, to we can analyze and understand the uh, themes and complexities of the play by Errol Wind. <coughs> Conclusion. <coughs> uh, this uh, play uh, written by Errol Wind since uh, its uh, uh, 1958 preview has inspired myriad interpretations. Uh, some view it uh, through an uh, absurdist lens portraying the chaotic and meaningless nature of existence. Others dwell into its uh, psychological depths, exploring themes of uh, identity and uh, liberation, uh, particularly through the enigmatic character of Stanley. It's also being seen as a political angle. So, reflecting Winter's uh, own beliefs amidst the Cold War era. The play's exploration of power dynamics. Uh, meta theatrical elements, existential themes, and uh, the interplay of comedy and tragedy further enrich its complexity. So, Winter's uh, ambiguous dialogue and cryptic symbolism continue to provoke uh, thought and ensure its enduring status. 
is a timeless and richly interpretable piece of literature. Uh, this I have referred from ChatGPT. This is my reference, and uh, I would like to conclude this uh, presentation by his uh, uh, quote, Errol the past is what you remember, imagine you remember, convince yourself you remember, or pretend you remember. I repeat once again. The past is what you remember, imagine you remember, convince yourself you remember, or pretend you remember. Thank you. If anyone is having a question, feel free to ask. So, Reshma, my question is, according to you, what are uh, some impossible interpretations of the title, the birthday party, and how does it relate to the events uh, of the birthday party, of the play? Okay, Rahul, your interpretation of the title. Well, uh, <coughs> usually <coughs> we all celebrate birthday uh, and we make party, but uh, we, we can see in this play, uh, Harold Winters played the birthday party where well. <coughs> in starting of the play, uh, they, are, uh, they are starting the uh, party for fun and uh, uh, eventually it, it, uh, it starts going wrong and uh, it becomes complicated in this uh, play of uh, Harold Winters. So in this way, the interpretation we can see in this play and uh, we, uh, it makes us think that uh, we should not uh, we should not celebrate birthdays by uh, studying this. So, Reshma, my question to you is: In your opinion, what would you say about the key event or conflict that uh, drives the plot of the birthday party? Okay, uh, Pallavi. So. The key event in this uh, play, the birthday party, where uh, we can see that uh, when uh, three characters are there in this novel, uh, Mac, Petty, and uh, Stanley, they are living uh, in a boarding house where uh, two strangers come, uh, Magnan and uh, this girl. Magnan and Goldbuck comes and they both uh, start uh, uh, distracting the uh, the routine of uh, Stanley, where they both. Uh, uh, constantly ask, ask him uh, weird questions and constantly they ask questions to him and uh, when he stay himself uh, get disturbed and he himself start thinking that uh, uh, who, am, who am I really so in this way uh, the key events and uh, and when in by this the conflict starts in the play and it goes Okay, so hello everyone. Today I will be dealing with the topic Interrogating Existence a Comparative Analysis of Pinter's and uh, Beckett's Masterpiece. These are my personal information. And yes, I will be dealing with uh, Pinter's The Birthday Party and Beckett's uh, Masterpiece that is Waiting for Godot. So, in the, both the plays, I uh, will be uh, talking about their themes and uh, like absurdism or uselessness we will see in this. So, uh, the absurdist transition, uh, the foundation and influences, the origin of uh, absurdist theatre, the theatre of the absurd uh, emerged as a response to the breakdown of traditional values and the existential crisis of the mid 20th century, influenced by existential uh, philosophy, uh, philosophers uh, Camus, uh, Sartre, and Hedigre. Uh, the movement explored themes of uh, human existence, uh, absurdity and the breakdown of communication. Philosophical influence explored philosophical themes such as the meaninglessness of uh, existence, the absurdity of uh, human condition and the breakdown of communication, symbolism, surrealism, and the absurdity uh, to depict the absurdity and chaos of life. Often uh, employing dream-like uh, imagery and disjointed narratives. 
subjective realism uh, absurdist playwrights uh, criticized uh, conventional language and uh, inadequate for experiencing human experience uh, expressing human experience emphasizing its limitations and uh, distortions the movement subverted uh, traditional notion of uh, reality, presenting a distorted, fragmented world uh, where characters grapple with existential despair and absurdity of existence. The painter's birthday party is uh, subverting uh, normalcy and questioning identity. The play is very well explained and the themes and all by the Ria, all. So I won't dive deep into it. But uh, yes, the Harold Winter, a key figure in this movement, uh, portrayed themes of unknown uh, menace, a verbal torture, and a power struggle. Winter's uh, characters often engage in abusive language and uh, power struggle, reflecting unequal power dynamics. Uh, fragmented identities, the birthday party demonstrates how Stanley, Stanley's identity is gradually destroyed through linguistic manipulation and power struggle by uh, uh, Goldberg and Megan. Stanley's uh, resistance against the theater, uh, theater. threats uh, to his identity highlights the struggle for individual agency in the faces of oppressive forces. The absurdity of language, uh, the cultures and uh, impoliteness imp 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 uh, theory and Spencer's or these rap uh, report management model are applied to analyze the power dynamics. Uh, in the play style, the characters are uh, using uh, linguistic strategies to assert superiority and undermine others. The absurdity of language uh, is evident in the characters' fragmented uh, conversation filled with sarcasm, insults, and power plays. Now, uh, the waiting for Godot, uh, here, um, uh, as we all know, the like uh, overview, like what the uh, uh, Lalibir and Estragon and uh, the all characters are doing. So on that basis, uh, the, um, uh, the uselessness of language in wasting time, we can see that how they are just uh, wasting their time just to time pass uh, and they are for, as they are waiting for Godot and they have nothing to do, so they just uh, does time pass. Characters engage in conversation primarily to pass time reflecting the theme of existential uh, boredom uh, and futility. Time is portrayed as an enemy, with characters stuck in a cycle of waiting and aimless conversation. The core of language, Beckett's language explores the meaninglessness and disorder of the world. Language serves as a tool of depiction with the characters struggling to find meaning. So uh, when uh, that uh, uh, lucky is the... Uh, uh, is allowed to speak that uh, now if you want to speak speak to uh, he, at that time he is speaking uh, like without the connection his words is not connecting uh, though he is as he was uh, allowed to like he was just given a permission to go and speak and at that time he was just uh, mixing his uh, uh, emotions but there was no connection between them it was just uh, uh, language serves as a tool of uh, depiction with characters struggle to find meaning. Beckett's, la Beckett's language is uh, serious, complex, and uneasy to understand, uh, reflecting the character struggle. The exclusive Godot. The mysterious and absent figure of Godot symbolizes the search for transcendent meaning, which means forever out of reach. Characters struggle to find their true selves amid the indifferent universe leading to a sense of despair and withdrawal. Now the theme of isolation and both the like play will uh, just uh, compare it and isolation and uh, existential crisis. Pinters and uh, Beckett's characters are profoundly isolated, unable to meaningfully connect with the other and grapple with the profound sense of disconnection. Characters struggle to communicate and find meaning in a seemingly meaningless world. Surreal events the plays of feature, uh, feature strange and irrational <clears throat> occurrence such as characters changing personalities or uh, impo improbable physical transformation. Yes, we can see in that uh, Goldberg that he was being sweet to others and whereas uh, when it comes to Stanley, he was just uh, humiliating him with his words and Questioning reality. The play is ch uh, challenge the audience's perception of reality, blurring the lines 
between truth and illusion the place challenge uh, the audience's perception of reality and rationality through absurd events and dialogue they provoke critical reflection on the irrationality of human existence now language and silence uh, communicative breakdowns in the place fragmented dialogue dialogues between characters is fragmented and often meaningless like uh, Mac and Betty, they uh, both were like at the morning she was uh, serving uh, breakfast and uh, how am I, like the talk between them was very silly and meaningless. Uh, words lose uh, their meaning and language becomes a source of confusion rather than clarity. Uh, Beckett uses uh, repeated vocabulary pronoun, cha pronoun changes and sound effects to reinforce uh, themes of absurdity and meaninglessness. To love for depiction, it is uh, described as gloomy, mysterious, and full of aggressive details mirroring the character's existential angst. The language is difficult to understand, adding to overall sense of uh, dis disorientation. Silence and subtext. The play are punctuated by moments of pregnant silence where the unspoken becomes as significant as the spoken, adding the sense of unease un and uh, isolation, indicating the character's inability to find meaning or connection. In the absence of meaningful communication, uh, characters resort uh, to silence or engage in absurd dialogues. As I mentioned uh, about the Mag, Petty, and also uh, uh, Meg with uh, Stanley and all, just silly communication. Highlighting the inefficiency of language in expressing complex emotions and characterization and struggle for agency. Uh, agency yes. uh, protagonist turmoil. Pinter and Beckett's protagonists, such as uh, Stanley and Vladimir, are portrayed as deeply uh, troubled individuals, uh, grappling with the profound sense of uh, dis disempowerment and the loss of agents yes uh, we can see stanley is also in the like uh, he was his health for, was in a like uh, as he was a uh, very famous as i mentioned that uh, he used to be a musician and all so he was in his zone whereas Vladimir and estrogen they were estrogen they were also waiting for something which is not at all present or there's no mention that who is uh, who is Godot or is it really a uh, is it there someone really like a Godot or not? Uh, Camus characters um, such as uh, uh, Murasot and Dora, these are also uh, characters of two play that is the guest and the uh, strange, stranger. Yes, in camera. Uh, face uh, existential crisis and the uh, overtly revolt against so, uh, societal norms and uh, expectations. Despite the struggles, they maintain a sense of uh, dignity as they confront, uh, confront their absurd realities. Subverting archetype. The play is uh, the play this this con deconstruct traditional characters archetype uh, archetypes, creating complex and ambiguous uh, figures that defy easy characterization, mirroring the inherent complexity of the human experience. Existing lit uh, literature on absurdism offer various interpretations, uh, emphasizing the lack of theatrical clarity. Scholars like Esleen and Booker uh, uh, explore the complexity of absurdity in literary works. Shifting power dynamics. The plays explore the shifting power dynamics between the character as they struggle to assert their agency and control in the face of overwhelming forces beyond their control. Characters like uh, D. Arasat and the unnamed hero, the agenda or a uh, confused mind, uh, subvert archetypal roles and uh, resist ideological uh, expectations. They embrace uncertainty and ambiguity, challenging uh, established power dynamics and societal norms. So, uh, concluding uh, both the, uh, like, uh, after talking about Peter, Pinter and Beckett, we can say that uh, to uh, resonate with audience and scholars alike as uh, they grapple with the fundamental questions of human existence, their plays serve as a testament to an enduring power of absurdist theatre to challenge our perceptions, provoke critical
critical reflections and illuminate the profound mysteries of the human experience. Both Pinter's and Pinter's birthday party and Beckett's waiting for Bozo explore the theme of existentialism, alienation, and the absurdity of human existence. Uh, they do so in distinct ways. Uh, Pinter's play dwells into the disintegration of identity and the intrusion of external forces that uh, external forces into individual lives, creating a sense of unease and paranoia. On the other hand, Beckett's masterpiece portrays a more uh, overtly existential dilemma through the characters of Vladimir and Estrogen, who, Estrogen, who grapples with the futility of waiting for meaning or salvation. Yes, these are my references. Thank you. Now, if anyone is having any questions, please. So, my question is explore the motive of uh, alienation and its imp implication for the characters in Pinter's and Beckett's masterpieces, uh, considering the socio political context in which they were written. So, they were written during the time of uh, post World War II. So, at that time, the it was like um, the you can say it was a power or something. Or the people were disillusioned, or uh, we uh, can see here that uh, they were like uh, suppressed by the superiors, or we can say the authorities, as we can see in the uh, Macbeth, or uh, Macbeth, oh, sorry, and the uh, oh, sorry, uh, Mac, Macken and uh, Goldberg that just, uh, they are suppressing Stanley and just humiliating him. And in the same way, when we uh, look to the Godot. And that also that uh, lucky and Bozo Jody, we can see that. Yes. My question is how do Winter and Beckett depict power dynamics and interpersonal relationships within the context of existential activity? Okay. So when we look at this, we can say that uh, in both the plays, uh, we can see the as I uh, mentioned that uh, they both have the themes of uh, meaninglessness, uh, absurdity. We can find and uh, yes, this all things we can find in both the plays. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Yesra Soda, and uh, today I am going to discuss the uh, topic uh, Facing the Void a Comparative Analysis of Absurdism, Nihilism, and uh, Existentialism. Uh, my information uh, Question and ideas address in the uh, presentation what is absurdism, what is existen existentialism, what is nihilism, uh, what are the differences and similarities among these philosophical uh, perspectives. Uh, first of all, absurdism. absurdism. And the definition uh, uh, in the Maria Webster, Webster absolutism is the philosophy based on the belief that the universe is irrational and meaningless, and that the surge of order brings the individual into, into the conflict with the universe. So the basic idea is universe is uh, meaningless, and when we get to know that universe, and when we try to uh, get to the uh, universe, we are uh, in the conflict. Uh, the pioneers of the works we find uh, the Albert Camus. Uh, in that work, we find the rebellion from the traditional ideas, the myth of Sisyphus, the uh, myth shows that uh, absurdist, absurdist idea that how Sisyphus is uh, rolling this uh, stone over the uh, mountain uh, continuously day by day. Freedom and passion we find in the Soren Kierkegaard. We find the subjectivity of the truth. 
that every the truth is not the common but uh, it uh, changes uh, individually a leap of faith we have already uh, discussed that while we are discussing the uh, that waiting for god uh, delhi uh, logical suspension of the uh, ethical so what what were the ethics uh, during the traditional times now it is broken down and uh, in the absolutist ab idea uh, we have to uh, do that by ourselves uh, in nihilism, nihilism is the viewpoint uh, that the traditional values and beliefs are unfounded, that the existence is senseless and useless. Now, uh, the nihilism is the same idea that the universe is me uh, meaningless, and uh, we, uh, the finding, uh, the very idea of finding the meaning in the universe it is also the meaningless. So, meaning the it is taken from the Latin uh, means nothing. It was originated in 19th century Russia and Nietzsche used Patrick Nietzsche uh, make it very popularized. In 20th century, it became uh, like rejecting of the moral truth and knowledge and communication. So this information is taken from Tanika. Uh, existentialism. Uh, existentialism is the chiefly 20th century philosophical movement embracing the diverse doctrines but cent uh, centering on the uh, analyzing the individual existence and unfathomable universe. In the major focus, we also find the uh, uh, the universe is meaningless, life is meaningless, but we have to uh, create our own meaning. Uh, so that is the basic philosophy uh, in the 20th century. Uh, it is immersed, uh, emphasized on individual existence. We have to create our own existence. Reject the universal truth, uh, focusing on choice, individual choice, freedom and meaning. Explore the angst, alienation and uh, authenticity. Uh, the uh, major pioneers is also there, Kierkegaard, uh, Lodzki, Satre and Nietzsche. Uh, now, uh, uh, article written by George Selfer. Uh, the name of the article is uh, Absurdism and uh, Existentialism, the Aesthetics of Nietzsche and Camus. He argues that both culturally and academically Camus matured uh, the word tingle and Nietzsche use. So he says that in both of the books, like Kamu's work and Nietzsche's work, Kamu uses some of the uh, 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 philosophy of Nietzsche in his works. Uh, some of the citations also also there. The some lines are also taken. So they argue in the in the both works how they see the aesthetics and art. So this is the like basic understanding is that the absurdism art uh, creates the uh, illusion in the, in the Nietzsche's uh, views. A uh, state of health during the meaninglessness and existence where Kamu believe that the uh, art aggravates the sense of absurdity by portraying the men's senseless situation. In the nihilist uh, concept we find that Nietzsche says that uh, art provides a temporary suggestion against the nausea of nihilism. Uh, where Kamu says that there is no absolute truth that art can, art can be uncovered. Existentialism. Uh, Nietzsche believes that art generates the state of intoxication that helps the individual to create subjective meaning, where Kamu believes that uh, art does not offer refuge or resolution but reflects the fragmentation of the human condition. Uh, now, what are the similarities we find in the three of the concepts, philosophical concepts, nihilism, existentialism, and absurdism? Rejection of objective meaning, like universe is meaningless, life is meaningless, three of the major concepts. That is based on that idea. Focus on individual subjectivity. We have to create our own meaning, whatever we have to believe. Individual have to believe whatever he wants to believe. Critic of traditional metaphysical and religion. They, three of the concepts does not do not believe in the traditional religion. Embrace the human freedom and responsibility. Like three of the ideas uh, rely on the individual himself that one has to choose his freedom and also has to take the, take the responsibility of their uh, actions. Skepticism towards the absolute truth. Uh, we have to be uh, skeptic that whatever is being told in the religion and traditional ideas, it is not true. Concern for the human condition. Uh, the, uh, uh, these ideas are discussed. Uh, in the three, uh, three of them, what are the dif uh, differences we find? The central idea, uh, existentialism believes that personal freedom create meaning through the choices. There is universe is meaning. We have to create our meaning. Absurdism says that uh, there is absurdity, so just accept it and move forward. And nihilism says that uh, there is no meaning and finding the search of meaning, it is also the few times. Key figures like we find in existentialism, Sartre, Nietzsche, Kierkegaard, in absurdism we find Kamu, Kafka and Beckett, nihilism, Nietzsche and uh, Schopenhauer. Uh, 
uh, meaning of uh, life to create meaning no inherent pur purpose is there absolutism believe that uh, find fulfillment in the absurdity no ultimate meaning and uh, in nihilism life has no inherent meaning search for it it is also a few times the same we, uh, we find in the uh, different uh, response to absurdity how the response to the absurdity embrace freedom self existence we have to uh, create our existence absurdism accept absurdity and define uh, it with dignify uh, nihilism accept the lack of meaning and apathy uh existential anxiety anxiety from freedom of choice in absurdism anxiety from confronting the absurdity nihilism we find the despair of apathy from the lack of meaning ethics we find personal responsibility authenticity we have to create our own ethics our own morality absurdism solidarity ethical integrity it is absurdism and whatever you do it doesn't matter nihilism reject traditional morals and skepticism whatever we do we have to be skeptic that it is moral or not a uh, perspective on death existentialism believe that uh, highlights the significance of choices ultimate absurdity so you want to commit a suicide you can there is uh, nothing like personal choice absurdity is uh, confront with dignity part of existence death is the part of existence uh, absurdist belief nihilism says that renders into ultimately the meaningless end of the consciousness it is just the end of the our consciousness uh, that is there and relationship with god focus on anatomy Uh, object relate the traditional religion uh, they don't believe in religion absurdism we find absent and indifferent confront the absurdity alone and the nihilism we find the reject that transcendent meaning view as the human image the we have created the god god uh, does not exist uh, in the conclusion we can find uh, through this uh, discussion we find the uh, can get the different uh, perspective from different philosophers uh, Uh, critical examination we can examine the gross grossly that how they believe and how we can understand the philosophy empowerment of individual agency agency we have individually have to decide whatever we want to do whatever the ideology want to be, believe in complexity of human experience uh, everyone experience differently and they have given their own philosophies uh, pluralism in thought some of the ideas are common in three of the philosophies encouragement of reflection we have to reflect our own ideas uh, we have to create our own uh, identity by ourselves so that is from my side uh, these are some references uh, thank you now you can ask uh, questions yes my question is in what way do existential thinkers like jean paul sartre and i will to canvas propose navigating the void of existence and how do their approaches align or differ from each other uh albert camus we have discussed the myth of sisyphus and in, in the uh, writing of that he says that uh, we have to uh, the existence is absurd so uh, even if it absurd we still we have to accept and still hey, we have to do uh, whatever the things we want to do like it doesn't have to do with the existence like whatever the choices we do existence doesn't have to be anything built up and uh, jean paul sartre we also find the same concept that uh, existence uh, is just uh, is there and we have to make our own choices so yes. uh, so uh, yes Uh, can you discuss any contemporary applications or relevance to the existential philosophy in today's society? Uh, after the this existential philosophy came into existence, uh, uh, we find that uh, during the twentieth century, before that, we find that most of the people are believing in the uh, religion, and then the Charles Darwin theory of evolution, and then came, and then this. Uh, philosophies that came into existence so the the, uh, the idea of uh, that there is no god or god is that uh, creating our own morality our own ethics that uh, in the 20th century that also realized on them we have to take our uh, uh, action uh, responsibility of our action and we have to move forward so in the 21st century we also get the same idea and uh, we uh, some of the things uh, like uh, people can uh freely says that i don't believe in god or they also provide some of the uh, articles and 
these uh, references or these type uh, of philosophers and they can create their own uh, morality or ethics. So in the 21st century, in contemporary time, we also find the same differences. Okay, so uh, most of you did quite well. Uh, a few uh, yesterday also, I suggested you that don't uh, refer to articles like this is taken from this article or that, but you have to directly say that this writer in this article refers to so and so kinds of things instead of saying that I have taken this from uh, this article or that one. Okay. Mm, by and large, things were quite good. Uh, there was a good article by Tagore, I think, in Hemali's presentation on modernism and how he talks about modernism. Uh, Priyanshi also presented well on expressionism. Uh, Jais also was good on uh, animes, Japan, war. A few on this war literature were there. So there I have shared one quote also in one article also, which is very important to keep in mind because uh, Asha or Kushi, when you refer to Rupert Brooks' uh, uh, poem, uh, which is appreciating, celebrating. At that time, this point becomes very necessary to make that uh, many critics already have criticized that way of looking at war also. So how we see uh, the war subsequently after studying artist of the floating world also that how people see so that point should come uh, into uh, the discussion reshma on birthday party uh, this so the point is not about not celebrating birthday party but to understand the meaninglessness of it <laughs> it is meaning so it is seen in an argument like why the days of uh, uh, karma are not celebrated in this so it is not doing the like this Celebrated. Yeah. If we get that idea from absurd thing that life is not worth living, then there is a wrong message. And that's why we have seen many videos to see that life is worth living. You have to be in search of meaning, though all the meanings are meaningless. Then also, yeah, yes, Raj also presented well the things that we. Okay, so uh, I want to share this that what is uh, the basic objective of this presentation and uh, how you uh, see those things also. So uh, very briefly, uh, let me share uh, this small uh, uh, slideshow. Uh, what are the uh, objectives of uh, uh, the presentations and uh, what sorts of uh, learning outcomes are expected? Like if you think then what is expected, whether that happens or not, it's a different story. But what is the uh, objective? Uh, so uh, we see uh, two things here. Uh, uh, one is uh, assessment versus evaluation, one part. And the second part is about Bloom's taxonomy. And how, uh, according to Bloom's taxonomy, uh, we have to develop higher order thinking skills among the learners. But along with that, we also want to see digital skills also so presentations we try to aim uh, both the things happens or not so when we see assessment and evaluation this uh, uh, graphic you can see uh, uh, presentations are uh, assessment to improve the quality to increase the quality it is not to make a judgment that this student is a first class student to second class or third class but uh, it is everyday uh, routine process to see that how uh, year by year, semester by semester, all five days, we keep on improving our quality. Uh, university exams are uh, evaluation. It gives you one mark sheet and says that you are a first class student or you are a third class student. That is, uh, it, that is judgment. This is not judgment. So here, if you get uh, whatever score, but the score is meaningless. There is no purpose of that score. But what you learn from making the thing and then the comments and how you improve on that, that is more important rather than the final score. So 
uh, assessment as an internal uh, uh, system is for to improve the quality and uh, university exams are normally closers they just give the thing uh, it is a sad fact of a society that we value evaluation more than assessment actually assessment should be valued more because that helps in improving the quality but in our society in our job market uh, the mark sheet is more important rather than what uh, really people know but that is we our purpose is to see assessment to increase and improve the quality bloom's taxonomy this is a very famous pyramid huh, of this and uh, if you are at the first level remember then you are lots 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 means lower order thinking skills so if you can remember the things and again vomit it in a better then you are lots lower order thinkers but if you can create something step by step, not like jumping directly as the meme that we have seen yesterday, not in that way, but step by step by understanding properly, then applying it, then analyzing, evaluating, and then creating. Many times uh, students just create the things without moving the step by step kind of thing. So you see a huge gap in between. Uh, when you do that, you are moving towards higher order thinking skills, HOTS. So from lots you become hots. That is the journey. You have to climb the pyramid from lots to hots. So a lot means so many people. Hots are very few. Now people use the word rather cool for that. People used to say hot, something that is selling like hot cake, much in demand. But lots are so many. Lower order, higher order thinking. So how you climb that ladder and all these markers, recognizing and recalling facts, which is necessary also. But uh, how you combine parts to make a new whole, how you see. When you compare the things, we can uh, see that are you able to create the in a proper way or not. So when we remember or recall at the bottom, uh, 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 or when uh, we create PowerPoint presentations, students need to recall information which you have studied, you have read at various places, and then whatever uh, new research you are doing or search that you are doing, with the help of internet, classroom materials, uh, and other things there. Understanding means to effectively communicate your ideas. Uh, uh, this involves explaining concepts in their own words, breaking down complex ideas, and ensuring the audience can comprehend the information provided. Now, that is where somewhere still the problem comes, that you are not able to uh, speak in your own words, but you just read the slides of the things that are taken there. So that we need to see. If you have understood the things, there is no need to worry. Whatever you will speak will be correct. But if there is no understanding, you have to read everything word by word. Uh, applying. Uh, uh, creating PowerPoint presentation requires students to apply their knowledge, organizing information, which normally everybody is displaying, that how you will start uh, how your climax will come, how you will conclude, those, that is the organization part. Uh, selecting relevant visuals, many of you are doing good uh, in selecting images also. Uh, and formatting slides effectively also. Now even AI is helping many of you in preparing uh, 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 beautiful slides. Uh, they must apply uh, what you learned to create a coherent and engaging presentation. So we can say that uh, all of your presentations are of good quality. So when the slides are well prepared, well organized, content also is good there. Analyzing part, students are the students can demonstrate their analytical skill by critically examining the topic they are rep, uh, presenting. This is the point that we say that you talk about Rupert Brooke, and he wrote a poem huh, about soldier, and he appreciated that. But your critical insight will also help you to question that also. So you can, because your presentation is on that topic, you will say that, that this is how Rupert Brooke uh, sings the praise or song of war going to the battle. But at the same time, your critical insight will tell that you will have to add something to question whether that is fair and square or not. This could involve identifying patterns, making connections between different pieces of information, or analyzing the significance of key concepts within the context of the presentation uh, and evaluating presentations provide an opportunity for students to evaluate the strengths and weakness of their of different arguments 
perspectives or interpretations related to the topic. They can assess the credibility of sources, evaluate the effectiveness of different presentation techniques, and critic the content presented. When we reach at a higher level, things become a bit complex for students. So we have to tell you that this source that you have selected is a good source. This source is not a good source. So this source you should avoid, this you should do, uh, read more, this kind of thing should be done in a, in a better way also. So that way when we reach at the higher level, then students require the help of tutor or facilitator uh, to tell that whatever way they are moving is correct or not. So that is evaluation part. Our own work, how can we evaluate? Uh, many times we always find our work very good only. Uh, if you do peer and self-evaluation, then also you have to see that in context of other students, that how they others have done and how you are doing. That way also you can acquire the skills of evaluating your own content also. And finally, creating. Students showcase their creativity by designing visually appealing slides, incorporating multimedia elements and presenting their ideas in uh, innovative ways. They may also propose new solutions, generate original ideas, or develop unique insights during the presentation process, which is, we see, very rarely happens. That your own interpretation is coming into that, and in your own way, you see the possibility of looking, but that is the highest goal. We hope in semester three, we'll be able to be at the top of the pyramid. The final one, uh, final two, uh, evaluating also, and creating also, and you will add something your own, uh, your own way of looking at those things will also be presented in the concluding uh, slide. Uh, uh, so uh, learning outcome, if you see that what way you it is expected, you, you should have learned, uh, you might have enhanced the understanding, uh, your critical thinking skills might be developed, your communication skills also, because uh, many of you might never be speaking in English for 5-10 minutes also. So at least in one semester, you speak for 20-30 minutes in English. Uh, that also will help you in improving your communication skills. Uh, but uh, once you make the presentation, you get confidence that you can stand up and you can speak your public speaking and other things also is much better than those who are not doing uh, these kinds of things also. Many times students are not aware. If you will compare uh, the students who were in UG with you or in college, schools with you and where they have moved and where you are, have moved and then what you are doing and what they are doing, if there is a difference, then slowly and steadily you can perceive uh, the difference that the way you can articulate yourself, ideas, uh, you can speak and convince other people, the others are not able to do. So that is the, uh, learning about communication skills. Uh, creative expression also uh, you develop by doing this. Your research skills also improve because you now start looking at quality journals and quality articles there and collaboration also. Many of you might have to work with each other for some slides, some content, for technical things also. You are not able to uh, manage the thing. So uh, in a team, people have to work with uh, each other collaboratively also. So these are experiences key takeaways or learning outcomes which are uh, which, which are proposed that when students undergo this process they might be uh, learning the things it depends upon uh, you whether uh, this really happens with you or not you have to do your own evaluation and see whether in this parameter are you able to uh, acquire any things or not so first is assessment part how you improve the quality rather than the closer mark uh, the final score doesn't matter a lot, uh, but what quality you have improved, that is more important. And uh, this pyramid, that how you can climb from wherever you are, in whichever space you find yourself, how you can move to the top of the of the pyramid. There. So these are uh, the objectives uh, uh, of uh, uh, presentations uh, here. I hope uh, in the next semester, uh, you will be able to uh, work on this uh, more significantly and try to articulate yourself accordingly also. So with this, uh, we end our uh, this very long journey of uh, for me 10 days, for you 5 days. <laughs> and uh, 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 next semester again, uh, we will have our third season of our semester presentations. We end our uh, here.